Well, it's a Thursday night in the state of Alabama, and it means high school football. Fairfield, Alabama, the site. I'm glad to have you with us here on WOTM as we are already underway in this 2021 high school football season. Landrum Roberts, Gerhard Mathangani, and we welcome you into this Thursday night. We got a good one. We had a couple of good ones last week with the kickoff classic there in Montgomery, but we kick it off with center point. The Eagles, George Bates invading the Fairfield Tigers. This center point team, George Bates, he feels like it's going to be his most well-rounded since his start there. He's been having a great background overall, all of his stops. And you feel like this year, it is fourth year, the year that it all comes together. He faces a very good Fairfield team looking to make a bounce back after the 2020 season. Yeah, that 2020 season, they fell to the Eagles 21-20. It's a defensive-minded team, and they play it well. We continue to preview Center Point and Fairfield here on WOTM. It's high school football. Stay with us. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. It's a new day here at Team One Chevrolet of Gadsden. Hi, I'm Kevin Riggin, General Manager, and I would like to personally invite you in to see the Team One difference. We offer one of the best inventories in North Alabama, and we will always promise the best deal. Visit our service department where we have highly trained technicians and the latest equipment. Team One Chevrolet of Gadsden, home of the best people, the best service, period. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late night bus ride home after a hard fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine if it never happened at all. School sports need your help. With budgets getting tighter, it's more than the games that are on the line. It's all the traditions, the community pride, the culture of your hometown high school, plus all those memories that are on the line too. What can you do? It's simple. Buy a ticket when you can. Go to a game. Take the whole family. Let's do everything we can to keep those cherished school sports memories alive. This message presented by the Alabama High School Athletic Association and the Alabama High School Athletic Directors and Coaches Association. Well, we welcome you back into Fairfield, Alabama. Clements Field, the Fairfield Tigers. There you see. We welcome you back into Fairfield, Alabama, Clements Field, the Center Point Eagles. 1-0 by way of forfeit last week, taking on the Fairfield Tigers, their first game of 2021. Landry Roberts, Gerhard, Mothengani, we appreciate you joining us here on WOTM for Thursday night high school football. We talked about it briefly in the open as we continue to look. Uh, let's start with Center Point, the Eagles, traveling just across town to take on Fairfield. Right. That matchup last year, 21-20. This Fairfield team, they're built for defense. That's the way they play. They have that blue-collar mentality. But when you look at George Bates, every stop that he's been, offense and playmakers, and we're going to see that tonight with a kid named Tony Bruce Jr. Exactly, and they're a really disciplined bunch, and I think that's kind of what separates Coach Bates' teams from a lot of other teams. However, Fairfield, a, a team that, once again, they come in with a lot of veterans on the squad and a lot of talent that I, I think that, that center point will see probably the best talent they've seen Throughout the course of the year, they'll be able to trace it back to this game. So it's a good non-region game, a good test for both squads. There will be talent, speed, athleticism all over the field. It's the Center Point Eagles taking on the Fairfield Tigers. Buckle up. We got it for you right here on WOTM. 
It's back to school time, and Sarah is paying your sales tax on new and pre-owned vehicles. Upgrade to a nicer, newer Ford, Honda, or Nissan, and the Sarah dealerships of Silicaga will pay your sales tax. That is a huge savings. We're paying your sales tax on new or select pre-owned vehicles on our lot. You heard right. We pay your sales tax. Interest rates are at historic lows. There's never been a better time to get more for your money. Plus, we've never paid more for your trade-in. Get a cash offer, even if you don't buy from us. We'll pay you 1000 more than any other written offer. Other dealers may be low on inventory, but at Sarah Dealership, we're stepping on the gas and loading up our lot. Come in today and get more Ford, Honda, and Nissan for your money at the Sarah Dealership of Silicago on Highway 280, and we'll pay your sales tax. Must finance at least 75% of purchase price with dealer preferred lender at dealer asking price. Not available in all pre-owned vehicles. See dealer for details. Drive it, love it. Well, we're not far away, too much time away from sunset. It's been a hot couple of days here, officially the dog days of August, but college or high school football, college football almost, Gerhard, yep. uh, underway. A lot of teams getting started last week, some playing jamborees, but for Keon Hanley, the Fairfield head coach and his Tigers, this will be the first peak of, we've seen of his team since the 2020 season. Exactly. We already saw how COVID started to manage its way through everything last week, and Center Point was hit with that last minute. But as you mentioned, Coach Hanley has a good shot of him right there. Now in his fifth year looking to have a winning season. Meanwhile, Coach Bates, as we mentioned time and time again, this is a guy that has had tremendous amount of success just about everywhere he has been now in his fourth year with center point a well-respected coach and a coach now with his team last week not being able to play and now getting a true front taste here in game action against another birmingham squad yeah this is george base it's going to be the first senior class he's ever been able to experience going back and if you don't know his bio he was an all-american defensive back at west alabama he got his start of course at woodlawn and then he got the, the job at minor and did great things. Went to the quarterfinals of the playoffs two of his three years. Ends up going back to Woodlawn for one season. Comes over to center point. This was the center point team that was, well, they were not in, in great shape right. as a program. Right. It had been a while since they had been to the playoffs. Well, what does he do? He, he turns that program around. Exactly. Exactly. He, yeah, go ahead. Well, he stresses the discipline not only on both sides of the ball, but off the field. Weekly progress reports. If you're not doing well in school, there's a good chance you're not going to play on Thursday or Friday night. Exactly. And you get the same kind of work ethic. You get the same kind of discipline handed down from Keon Handley handling this Fairfield Tigers program. Exactly. I think they're kind of carbon copies of each other in a lot of ways. Two coaches really looking to take their team to that next level. And you mentioned Coach Bates and these Eagles. A couple of years ago, won nine games, made it all the way to the third round of the state playoffs last year, lost in the first round. They play in a very tough region, so it's a very good and competitive non-region game, kind of where both teams can, like we saw last week, take a lot from it. Well, center point, they were ready for that one. Fairfield with the opening kick, trying the onside kick to get things going. A good job of that front line to stay at home. And coming up with a football for the center point Eagles. That was Dalian Hawkins Davis. 6'3, 290 pounds. He just fell on the football. All right, we get you set for this Eagles offense. Jabari Collier getting the start tonight. He started last year as a sophomore. Tony Bruce Jr., they were in a quarterback battle there in fall camp. Why not get two of your great athletes on the field at the same time? So Collier. And this Eagles team going to the first round of the playoffs, they fell to a very good Fairview team, 27-22. They could score a lot of points. And Troy Bruce Jr. talked about him in the open. He's a guy, number seven. They're going to try to get him the ball as many times as possible. 20 to 30 times per game is what George Bates would like to see. Exactly. So when you know when he says that on the front end, in a media setting, you know that he's, he's really, really wanting to make sure that both Bruce and Collier kind of lead this team offensively and you mentioned a good quarterback battle so you know that Collier has to be special to win the job. Trying to be special on first down. So he runs around right in on the keeper. Jabari Collier. Good look at him. Six foot one. That is what Jabari Collier is listed as. He crosses midfield, slung down from behind. And the Fairfield Tiger to get him was Jacoby Albert, the strong safety senior. 
And if that name sounds familiar to you Auburn fans, he committed to Auburn last week, and he will be one of the main guys both on offense and on defense for the squad already getting his name in there with a big defensive play. There you see the set for the Eagles wearing the white jerseys, the blue pants, blue and red helmets. Fairfield, the all purple with the white helmets. There goes Troy Bruce Jr. powering ahead, falling inside the 35 and ahead to the 33. A couple of plays ago, it was a fake to Bruce, and Collier was able to get enough yardage, and then that time we actually get it to Troy Bruce Jr. So you're starting to see how Coach Base will use both of these guys, and I think a lot of it will just be, hey, let's just trust our players to be able to make the read. So whether it's one of those reads that you saw Collier on on first down or play there where it goes to Bruce, and it looks like Bruce is, you know, tackle for a yard or two gain, and he ends up stretching it out. You're already seeing the early playmakers for the Eagles. Yeah, pick your poison there. And off to Bruce. Again, Troy Bruce, he looks like he's going to have his, his first down. Able to get inside the 30-yard line there on second and short. And they'll move the chains once again. Keep in mind, these are two juniors on this ball club, so they'll be here again once more next year. And already, as you said, a great quarterback battle, which led into where they are right now. And where they have right now is an Am first first down. Yeah, already a couple of Am first first downs on this first possession. This opening possession of this battle between these cross down foes. Jabari Collier seeing the man in motion. That's Javon Jones, one of the wide receivers. As Collier goes up, over the shoulder catch, wanting the flag was Harold Holloman. Not going to get it. The 5'11 junior wide receiver. Great effort. Almost came down with the football. Pretty good coverage. You can't really fault it by Jacarius Braxton. Exactly, and, th and that's exactly what center point wanted. They wanted that one-on-one -on -one battle. They ended up getting it. You mentioned the great defense there by Braxton. Nice play call there by center point. So uh, I'll be a bit surprised if they see that same alignment, try to go back to that play a little bit later on. The high snap it goes Troy Bruce Jr. Spins away from one man, can't elude. The Fairfield defender coming into the screen. The closing speed of Brandon Kidd. He plays outside at times. Middle linebacker, six foot two ten, and he brought some thunder. Bring it down the junior running back for center point. Great team defense there by the Tigers on that play, and you saw the quickness there by Bruce, being able to lead that first defender. That gang style tackling was able to get him down. Now we have a third and long situation. Got a little bit of help from the free safety. Senior and good size on Quentin House, six foot three, 185 pounds. You love to have a, a six foot three athletic, rangy guy there in the secondary. Bruce using a block, able to hide behind one of his offensive linemen. And just like that, a little under three minutes gone by, and center point picks up where they left off last season offensively, and it's Troy Bruce Jr. How much trust? Must you have in Troy Bruce Jr. on third and eight to have a running play called here. And it's a great delayed handoff and an excellent play by Troy Bruce Jr. It reminds you a little bit of what kind of Darren Sproles was in the NFL. Because he's so small, he's got great vision. He's able to find the crease. That time was a great play call with the delayed handoff. The defense hesitates just a hair too long. Next thing you know, he finds open grass, and he's fast enough to get to the end zone. Hey, Gerhard, what you got to love is James Daniels, big 78 that was there in your frame. Senior offensive lineman, 6'1", 350. Wow. So you got Troy Bruce, you talk about his size. Yeah, Darren Sproles, you can hide behind 6'1", 350. Exactly. It's an early lead by the center point Eagles. Fairfield will try to respond. It's Thursday Night Football here on WOTM. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA weekly show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Let's take a look at 
Troy Bruce Jr., a junior running back. He's a guy that they want to get the ball into his hands. Between 20 and 30 times a game, he's already touched it several times and already a touchdown, and you see why George Bates loves number seven. That's exactly right. And once again, just go back to that play call there. It's third and eight. Down there, they've already made great progress marching down into Fairfield territory. Nice delayed handoff. He gave the shout out there to the big lineman. And, and then this is just pure athleticism there by Bruce. He's able to get into the end zone. And you mentioned it on the top of our telecast, they had a really good competition at quarterback. And it looks like Coach Bates really couldn't go wrong there with either guy. Obviously, we only saw one pass on that last drive, but it looks like both of the athletes really have come to play in the first true game for the Eagles. Keon Handley, the Fairfield coach, talking to his coaching staff. And we'll see the Tigers for the first time on offense tonight. Eric Handley. His son, sophomore, 6'2", 180 pounds. He said at media days this summer when all the teams from the area got together and we got a preview of what we're going to see in this 2021 season, he said, yeah, now coach is all about fun. Not dad, but coach is all about fun. Right. But he's also about discipline. Don't get me wrong, he's serious about what we do, not only on Friday and Thursday nights, but also during the week and in the offseason. And that's exactly what you need to be able to play in the tough region that they play in. And once again, the kind of thing that mirrors – these two teams once like together is the fact they do play in tough regions. Well, ball bouncing around finally. It's Jacoby Albert, the Auburn commit, as Gerhard mentioned, picking it up. And that's where Fairfield will start on their opening possession. Mentioned Eric Hanley, six foot two sophomore. Quarterback that we will see coming out. He'll have some big guys on the offensive line. One of them is Adrian Griffin, number 55. He will play the tackle position. He'll guard the blind side, 6'5", 260 pounds. He can go, he's an athletic 260 pounds. And you can see it right there in the, in the middle of your frame. He's a big, big boy, but as you said, quick and nimble enough there to guard on the outside. Fairfield going from under center. Handley with a handoff and slung down is Trevor Pearson, the running back. Coming up to make the play quickly for the Eagle defense was Demario Hicks, the junior linebacker, 6'2", 225. Perfect play there. Just watch him shooting the gap, reading it perfectly. Nobody there to block big number 14. You'll hear his name as the not only this game, but the season goes along. He is their bell cow and one of the leading tacklers. There gets tackle number one of the season. This is a center point team, as we mentioned, that last year, last week, I should say, they found out late in the week that they won't play. So you get all of the first game juices, all that anticip anticipation and that hype going. You can't play. It looks like seven days later, they're ready to go. Pitch back to the tailback. That's Albert coming in motion. And the defense for the Eagles stacking that one up, backing it up behind the line. A little too slow to develop, but give that young man a lot of credit in getting the penetration from his defensive line position, Jaheim Nathan. Really nice play there defensively. See the tail end of it right there. That's two really good plays where you're seeing that the Eagle defenders are really reading the play very well and then attacking and being very aggressive. This Fairfield Tiger team, not a, a very deep roster. They have quality, but not very deep. Gerhard, 32 Tigers listed on the 2021 roster to open the season. Is that pass sailing out of bounds? And that will bring up what should be a punting situation here in your own territory. And based on what you saw from center point, you try to play a little field position here after the onside kick try and giving the Eagles the short field. Maybe Keon Hanley rethinking that here on this second one. You and I sat here last week and we watched how special teams really hurt the Gunnersville Wildcats last week. Two botch punts really gave Hanley short fields. You can't do that against a Hanley team. You can't do that against center point. An offense is a quick strike offense, but on that last Fairfield drive, you saw just how many times they tried to get Ja'Cory Albert, who was the intended player, on that pass as well. Um, Bruce thought about it. He lets it go as you had two men deep. And along with Bruce, you had Harold Holloman for the Eagles. And that's where they'll 
take over. But on that opening drive by George Bates and the center point Eagles, you saw Jabari Collier, the quarterback, faking to the inside, going to the outside, and then Troy Bruce Jr. Just give it to seven. Let seven do the work behind his big offensive line. Shows the shiftiness, the agility. They put one pass play in that first drive. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. It was a good play call, but everything else after that was on the ground. We'll see what they do here. They see if they put the ball in the air a little bit more on this drive. But as of right now, no need to. The, the running game has been phenomenal so far. And I'll tell you what, I think what happened on the back end was that was that there was a turnover, I believe, because the Fairfield Tigers on special teams on the on the kick coverage, they said that the ball bounced off of a center point defender. The referees must have got together and said that was the case. We'll show you a replay of that in just a moment. That ball almost picked. We almost had another turnover. But step it up to break it up was Thurman Moore. But Jamari still Johnson. Let's take a look again. Certainly couldn't tell from that angle. And it looks like they just, in an attempt to down it, they so, still said the ball was still alive. If you'll take a look here, there's a Fairfield player that comes in and touches the ball. Right? Nope, that, that's, that is that's, that's, that's a, that is a center, great, yeah, great call. Mm -hmm. And it looked from the angle we had, it was a Fairfield player that initially touched it, the ball would be down. But right. no, that was a center point player just not being aware of the situation. And I'm sure George Bates, his head coach, We'll let him know about that, but letting Fairfield know once again that young man, his second tackle of the night, and coming in to make the play, the linebacker, big linebacker. Six foot, 220 pounds. There you see, he's very, very active as Hicks so far in this one. And I'll tell you what, the, you mentioned the awareness on, on, the, on the play before. I don't know if anybody has better defensive awareness and instincts as this guy has had so far in this one. Heat timeout, we return 6-0 center point here on WOTM. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. And that young man, he's been all over the field as expected. Mario Hicks, a couple of tackles, tackle for a loss and center point. Looked like they were in prime position, Gerhard, to go up and get things rolling again on offense. But one of the center point players on the punt, the ball just sitting there. All you got to do is walk away, leave it alone. Right. They'll eventually blow the whistle. He touches the football and Fairfield alertly grabs it, a blessing, if you will. After giving center point great field position, now you have new life and you move the chains in a very unconventional way. Exactly, and this is a, a true test here for Fairfield who could not get anything going offensively on their last drive and already way behind the sticks on this one. Thanks in large part to Mr. Hicks. Sitting out third and 17, a long way to go against a very tough defense. 
Hanley firing across the middle. He was trying to find Quentin House, one of his primary targets, the senior 6'3", 185 pounds, coming across the middle, but that thrown around his ankles, bouncing off the surface here at Clements Field. He'd like to have that one back. Yeah, it looks like a, just a little bit of miscommunication there on the route that's supposed to be run because he was in the vicinity, but the, the pass was a little short, so might be a situation where he's supposed to run a couple of yards shorter there. The two players having a nice little conversation about it. Considering how wide open it was, I won't be a bit surprised if they go back to the middle of the field and go back to that play once again. But Fairfield punts to center point. Center point gives them the football, but no harm, no foul. We'll see what they have us here on this on this punt. I'm dropping the snap on the punt, but picking it up, Albert slung out of bounds, tries to earn something out of nothing. But he is short of the Amherst first down. So center point after the turnover the last time. The defense standing strong again. And we'll see Troy Bruce Jr., that young man, the junior running back for George Bates, back on the field after the touchdown score on the opening drive. And that ball landed about where the punt landed. So <laughs> all in all, I don't think center point has anything to, uh, to worry about there because the defense really stepped up and did their job. But you see special teams already making a, a big storyline in this one with the onside kick that center point took advantage of. And then now with the punt situation, defense steps up. And for the second time in a row here, looks like on first down, this happened on the first series, on first down, they go from first and 10 to first and five without even having to take a snap. Yeah, Keon Hanley, Fairfield Tiger head coach. These guys don't need any help. Rolling to the outside, crossing the 40 and up to the 41-yard line. Jabari Collier. Yeah, that time you see how that flow goes and nice little backside tackle there by Kid. Kid. And you have to watch this center point team because you'll see Collier. You'll see a lot of Bruce, and then all of a sudden, when you're not expecting it, they can hit you with a home run ball. Pump faking, there's Collier, trying to get out of trouble. Eluding one tackler, but he can't elude another. Knocked down around the line of scrimmage. Coming up to make a nice play for the Fairfield Tigers to carry Braxton. This is what you call great defense is staying at home here. Nothing open on that first read. Tries to tuck it, but see everybody just doing their job. and. Braxton, we saw him earlier with a one-on-one -on -one play from his cornerback spot that time coming through with a nice tackle there and probably one of the better defensive plays from Fairfield so far this game. So Collier getting his play in from the center point sideline. It's a first down. And Amherst first down. Once again, Fairfield snuffing that one out. As it was Jamari Steele Johnson trying to come around in to line up at wide receiver. A good play initially by the defensive end and then coming to clean things up, that was Brandon Kidd, the outside linebacker. These short passes are always really tough if you're trying to do that to the short side of the field, especially when you do it to the short side of the field and the defense stays exactly where they need to be. And that time, Fairfield did the exact same thing again. Kid that time, Braxton the time before that as far as just being able to maintain position. And it looks like the between the first series and the second series, the Fairfield defense really got together. And you're seeing the results of that. And once again, it is now center point behind the sticks. Collier, nobody was open. Now he has to tuck it, and he's going to lose three yards in the process. Big 54 for the Fairfield defense coming into the picture and making the play. That's Chris Devons. Once again, nothing downfield. We saw this two plays ago, and the defensive line coming in and doing their job. Great job there by the defensive tackle. Brandon Kidd also helping out on that play. As you look at Chris Devons. Six foot one.
No weight listed. Now you can tell he's a big boy. He's a big boy. <laughs> he is a big boy. And Fairfield has a lot of those. And, and this is something that center point hasn't seen a lot of in that first drive. You saw some of the frustrations there by the Arizona. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Well, there you see it. 322 left here in the first quarter. Welcome back into WOTM. It's Thursday night high school football. Landrum Roberts, Gerhard Mothengani. I'm glad you could be with us as you take a look at Keon Hanley, the head coach of the Fairfield Tigers. And of course, we appreciate all of our great sponsors for making these broadcasts possible. All the first downs you see tonight, presented by our friends at Am First. Appreciate their partnership. And looking forward to another outstanding 2021 high school football season. And Phil Boozer has a wonderful job there with Am First. Keon Hanley, fifth season with the Fairfield High School Tigers, one of the things, and, and you, you talk about the program, we talk about the academics. He was so proud of the kids he had on the roster with the cumulative grade point average and how many academic standouts right. they have at Fairfield. Third down and long from behind the sticks, the throw incomplete call. You're trying to find Harold Holloman, who's coming back to the football. But that one sailed wide, and the way this game started, and then you advance roughly six and a half minutes later, Gerhard. Mm -hmm. You got to feel better about it if you're the Fairfield Tigers. You just got to figure out something on the offensive side of the ball. Exactly. And it looks like they had something cooking a little bit there. That, that third down play looked to be open as we saw a little bit earlier where Hanley and Quentin House got together and, and talked. And, and you mentioned just being able to run the football. It just creates some offense in general. Fairfield might have to do it through the air. See if they change up anything here in this next series. But you mentioned it, a, a big time, big time defensive stand there by the Tigers. Well, it's Albert. And the punt, it takes a nice center point roll. So we'll see if Fairfield could get it going. Well, they get us going. That guy on the left, I don't know who he is. <laughs> it's very familiar. They got the pigskin roundup coming up tomorrow and you guys recap all of the action there on TV 24 and right here on WOTM of, of the high school games going around the area and the state. It's an exciting time and something we look forward to in the high school football season. 100%. This comes after the game of the week that you see right here on WOTM. So it's TV 24 WOTM. It is Mount Huntsville and Mountain Brook tomorrow night and right after that game, a little after that game, about 10 30 barring that we don't have any rain that we had last week during the uh, Jamboree game between Bob Jones and Dothan, but we'll come immediately after that game of the week. We'll give you the scores and the highlights. Anna Catherine Alderman is our co-host and in our 17th season doing this show and off the heels of John Holder and Mickey Shadricks, who've done it for a very long time, took it from the radio to television and back here in 2021 and really excited for week one of the season where just about everybody, if you didn't play a week zero game, just about everybody on the field will have at least one game under the belt tomorrow, so really excited for that. You mentioned uh, tomorrow night's uh, the feature game, Mountain Brook in Huntsville. Mountain Brook Spartans making a statement. The Buddy Anderson era, uh, the Hall of Fame coach stepping down last season. You had the new era taking on uh, Mountain Brook and doing it at Spartan Stadium. And boy, you talk about getting hit in the mouth. 33-3, to that Mountain Brook Spartan team, very impressive. Hans Huntsville's going to have their hands full. Exactly. You don't see that a lot from Vestavia. Of course, they went through a coaching change, and there's going to be some hiccups there. But, but Mountain Brook looks to be like a true contender for that 6A state championship. We saw a little bit of upheaval in the 6A overall polls. They don't mean much in the early going, but Mountain Brook looked really solid to start out. Hanley back at it at quarterback as he gives to his running back. Hezekiah Hudson Davis in the 5'10", 175 pound junior, making something happen on first down. We should take a look at game coming up next week. You got Woodlawn taking on Mountain Brook Colonels. 
had a tough challenge last week as they took on Tim McCax and the Jackson Olin Mustangs. Tell you what, J.O. looks strong. He certainly did. And as we jump into region play, it'll be a really, really fun time because a lot of these teams in the Birmingham metro area and the over the mountain area play in really tough regions. And to make the playoffs will not be easy, whether it's 5A, 6A, or 7A. Well, it's still first down. Penalty negating that gain for well, the Fairfield Tigers. Hanley had some room to run, forced to throw. Not a bad throw, but it was Quentin House that couldn't come up with it. A diving tries to take another look. Good job by the center point defender to step up and force the throw as it looked like momentarily, Gerhard, that Hanley had a little bit of room to run. Exactly. He did have that room to run, but then you saw him talking to Quentin House on their last possession. It looks like he, they want to get these two on the same page, and that time just out of the outstretched arms. But as you, as you mentioned, a really good play there by the center point defense. And because of the way that punt landed, Rick now sitting deep in their own territory, and they have to watch out here. It looks like a delay of game if they don't snap it quickly. Eric Hanley quickly gets the ball snapped. He connects that time to Quentin House, and Quentin House has a first down and more as he plants the hand, and it's another Amherst first down. It's only a matter of time before Quentin House actually was able to record a catch here this time. They just float out. Great protection there in the backfield by big number six. Hezekiah Hudson Davis springs out just enough. Put out just enough time for House to be able to get there. Dodges the first defender and Horn. He's able to get that first down. Now you wonder why do we do these drills where we have to we have to plant our hand on the ground and keep going and keep those feet moving. Well that's exactly why and it worked out the extra Yards after the catch that he was able to get, maybe five, six extra yards and Fairfield in business on offense here with 2.20 left in the first quarter. Now some room on this side as the Tigers up in to Eagle territory. It's an Amherst first down, Hezekiah Hudson Davis. The first run looked impressive. It was called back negated by the penalty. This one will not come back. Another great play design and great play execution as far as the blocking goes from up top. And you mentioned on the top of this series, trying to find some offense. They found it through the air. Now they found it on the ground. You have to know that Coach Hanley has been pleased. It kind of fed off the defense with that strong performance in their previous drive. And now the offense really getting the ball moving. Let's see if they go back to Hudson Davis, and they will. Hudson Davis not even touched until he got to the 40-yard line. He's forced out of bounds by the center point defender, but it should move the chains. Another first down for this Fairfield Tiger team, another Amherst first down. These teams, both of them, are so fast that if the play is blocked well, once you get to the corner, you have a lot of room. We've seen that now two plays in a row. Well blocked there by the Fairfield Tigers. They have now found some momentum with a very balanced attack. And you have to know that Coach Hanley is pleased so far. now. The question is if they can get into the end zone. A big, strong Fairfield offensive line doing the work to get these guys free, but give credit to wide receiver Jacarius Braxton, who was able to hold his block there on the outside. And Fairfield, they've got things going. On the ground, the ground attack, and trying to answer center point, who was able to score on their opening possession, but then a miscue, a turnover on special teams, a couple of back and forths, and now where it appeared that there was really no life in this Tiger offense. They found something, Gerhard. They certainly did, and they are going behind this great offensive line. They're right in the middle of your screen, a big guy, six foot nine, Jaquan McCory. Well, not only high school football and the Super 7, but all of your AHSAA championship events across the calendar year, where you're home for them, right here on WOTM, the great partnership we have with the AHSAA and all of our cable providers. And if you're not getting WOTM and it's not a part of your provider's channel lineup, you got to call and request that they add WOTM. 
We appreciate all the folks watching across the state. As it's Thursday night football, Fairfield and Center Point, 21-20 Center Point winning last year's battle. And it looks like we've got another good one. Hudson Davis, another great run. Hudson Davis just finding seams, finding daylights, runs with a lot of that forward body lean. And the problem and the concern you have if you're George Bates, head coach for the Center Point Eagles, you're not having a defender touch him sometimes until he gets 10 yards. Exactly. That was a great shot right there from the end zone. And you saw how just how big that hole was. And center point defense is fast, but so far proving the talent out of the backfield from Fairfield just a little faster. The quick out. There's Albert. He's going to go untouched. It's a touchdown for Fairfield. That was just a perfectly designed play and a great Great execution on the slant route there by Albert. He's able to get his hands on the football, and he's gone. Let's watch this. Just a really short drop back, one-on-one -on -one situation. He'll take the SEC talent, taking it into the end zone. He's already made his presence felt on defense, that time on offense, getting Fairfield on the board. And after a drive that just seemed to go nowhere in that first on the first drive for the Tigers. You have to love what they show right there. Started very deep in their own territory. Got the ball down the field. Found ways to do it with the run, both between the tackles and on the outside. And then Albert. Catherine Poole with, the with the extra point. It's Fairfield coming back. They lead 7-6 to six here. High school football, WOTA. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amfirst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Well, Fairfield head coach Keon Hanley feeling a lot better than he did, say, five minutes ago <laughs> when his team was trailing 6 nothing. really nothing to brag about early in this first quarter with center point taking the lead. But a little good fortune, heads-up play, falling on the ball, on the punt. You're able to get it in center point territory and then taking over and getting it deep in your own territory, mm -hmm. driving the field, and it all got started with the running game, the guys up front, but also the running back, talented running back for the Fairfield Tigers and Hezekiah Hudson Davis. Exactly, and you saw him run both between the tackles and on the outside. Great blocking by that Fairfield offensive line, and you saw some of the guys there the last time out just taking up the middle of that screen. Ahmad King, a great player at guard on the offense there for Fairfield. Meanwhile, you also had big number 55, who you mentioned earlier, Adrian Griffin, who's a fantastic player on the tackle side. And so they, I mean, they ran it to the right, they ran it to the left, they ran it in between the tackles, had a great pass out to Quentin House that kept the drive alive when they were deep in their own territory. And then another pass play from Hanley over to Jacoby Albert that secured the touchdown. So you saw the array of talent that Fairfield has right there on that one drive. And so center point, who in the early stages of the game made it look like they were going to be able to run away with this, how well they're playing both on offense and on defense. Now they have their hands full, down by one after that great drive by the Tigers. Well, after the successful extra point, DeAndre Poole with the ball on the tee, toes it. This one comes out at the 23. Fielded by Camarius Horn and Horn with a nice return for center point into Fairfield territory. Let's take a look again. A good job of the Eagles setting up the wedge, the wall, and then Horn doing the rest. Exactly. And you saw the great blocking there, but then a little bit of miscue on the kick coverage there by Fairfield. And field position has been a big point of this game so far. It looks like he'll come off the field right now. It looks like he's tending to his hand there, so we'll see if he's able to return. 
Well, it's been a minute since we've seen the center point offense. But Tony Bruce Jr. who had the opening possession touchdown as the flag comes in late. This might be going against the Tigers as Bruce was there on the boundary. And it might have been a Fairfield player that inadvertently hit him. And this is going to go for 15 yards. Yeah, I think it's that very last defender that came in for the Tigers that will end up making this a penalty. We mentioned earlier just how much, just how strong this Eagles team is without the help from the extra defenders. And, and that time, Albert, kind of, it, it's hard to blame him, uh, speaking, you know, from a defensive perspective. You're, you're taught to go to the whistle and take him all the way to the ground. And that time, a little bit out of bounds. I think that's what they got. They whistled him for. So, Albert, the same guy that scored the touchdown there. A little bit too much there on that tackle. And, Another 15 goes the other way. Yeah, if, if it had just been the initial tacklers, Amari and Tate, taking him to the ground, you're not going to get that flag. Right. But the extra, as you mentioned, just try, trying to help out the hustle play by Albert, turns into 15 yards, and another flag comes in. And it looks like Fairfield, the defenders were clapping there. So it, it's, it essentially well, it looks like it turns into a 10-yard penalty instead of a 15-yard penalty as you saw the call there against the Eagles. Here early in this season, you will see the laundry and his team's getting acclimated. But what you like to see, the teaching moments, but you, you don't want to surrender touchdowns. Right. I, I'd rather, rather teach after something bad happens, but we're able to recover. That's what we saw with a play earlier. But now if you're Fairfield Keon Handley, you want to keep that momentum and certainly don't want the center point Eagles to answer as they try here. Collier getting to the outside, the athleticism. And he's able to complete the pass. They're on the sideline. Fairfield coaches arguing that he was bobbling the football as we take another look. But he found Jamari Steele Johnson coming back to the ball. Looked like a pretty good catch and an athletic play, and that's what's got to frustrate you. On the defensive side, everybody doing everything right, but you give an athletic quarterback, as we see, and Jabari Collier some time, some room to operate, create with his legs. Anything can happen as he goes back to the air here. Harold Holloman catching it. Forward progress. Might be good enough for another M first first down. It'll be very, very close. And look at Holloman. Just two on two out there. And Braxton does a great job here closing in and holding him. Like I said, looks like he's just short of that first down. Well, zeros on the scoreboard. It's the end of the first quarter. What an exciting first quarter. Center point opening things up, but Fairfield answers. It's the Tigers leading 7-6 to six at home. We continue high school football here on WOTM. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel line.
Welcome back to Clements Field. Fairfield with the answer late in the first quarter. The Tigers, Keon Henley, their head coach, you see in the center of your screen, leading center point, led by George Bates. Seven to six, Jabari Collier. Sophomore quarterback who really grew up, got some valuable experience last year for this Eagles team, making it to the first round. Lost to a very good Fairview team. 27-22, now they're in business trying to respond after the Fairfield touchdown. That ball incomplete. This call you're throwing off his back foot, coming back the other way. He did have Harold Holloman open, Gerhard, but not enough zip on that. And now it's decision time for George Bates. Not much of a decision here. I think you uh, you probably wind up, you give it another toss. Exactly, and it benefited last time on third and eight. They had that delayed handoff. It's now a fourth down, so we'll see what Coach Bates does here. But you mentioned that last play. You know, Collier wants that one back. Fell straight to the turf there. You see the coaching staff for the Tigers. Or the Eagles, I should. Like Anthony Drew calling in the play. That pass intercepted. Well, that's why he's going to be playing on Saturdays in the Southeastern Conference. Jacoby Albert, the senior wide receiver, but also Play some strong safety coming over, playing center field. He read that one beautifully. Exactly. It's essentially triple coverage over there, at least double coverage. And you saw the the blitz on the backside. Just trying to get the ball out of here, but you mentioned it. He's listed as an athlete for a reason because we saw the play that he made with a touchdown that time coming in with the defensive play. Just a, a really strong, strong football player he is in really all three phases of the game. He had 30 catches last year, 555 yards. Also had multiple, about 30 tackles last year, and then also played a big part in the special teams. There you see Coach Drew talking to his quarterback. And if you are a glass half full kind of person, you could say, hey, this could be, you could kind of essentially call this like a punt that, you know, goes goes deep into the, goes deep into Fairfield territory. You want to. It's not really a coffin kick because the ball is about on the 11 yard line, but good chance here for the center point defense to step up. You can't have another drive as demoralizing as the last one was, where Fairfield marched all the way down the field. However, it looks like they'll have to burn one of their first timeouts. You don't see that a lot after a turnover. Not liking what they see there are the Tigers. Well, Eric Hanley, the quarterback, having to call the timeout. Personnel wasn't right, something wasn't right as the Tigers come over to the sideline for center point, second turnover, the first coming on a punt where the ball just rolling dead and one of the Eagles kind of losing his focus, his concentration, touching the football, then just kind of walking away and alertly, you had a Fairfield Tiger pick it up. Right, saw the, uh, saw the play there, was alert, and then Fairfield a little bit later on ended up Scoring on that drive. Scoring a little bit later in the game. Yeah, we appreciate all of you for joining us here on WOTM for Thursday Night High School Football, and especially our Spectrum viewers watching on SD80 and HD701. Right, we could be a part of your Thursday night. There's no college football tonight. There's no NFL preseason. Right. And this is football in its purest form. High school football here in the state of Alabama. Exactly. And you have two teams playing in their first game this year. Mentioned earlier, if you are tuning in, center point won last week by forfeit. So this is the their first game action. Same thing for Fairfield. Handing, Handing it off. That was Albert. Jacoby Albert does a little bit of everything. Wide receiver taking it from around in, intercepts the football on the defensive side. Or correction, that was Jabari Bennett who had checked in at running back. So he and Hezekiah Hudson Davis, who we saw on that last drive that was so effective, using some fresh legs, hot human night, late August in the state of Alabama. Cameron Bonner, as you see there, coming up to make the stick. Nice play there by Bonner. And this is a, a really talented center point bunch. We saw earlier in the game where Demario Hicks really made his presence felt in the running game. And that time you see it get clogged up there for no gain. Should look at 
the left side of your screen, the offensive tackle. I'll talk about him in a moment. Number 77 for Fairfield is turning nothing into something. Eric Hanley. He says it's an am for his first down. Indeed it is. 77, Jaquan McCroy playing tackle right there. Six foot nine, 315 pounds. They don't get much bigger than that. Only place you see bigger than that is in the NBA usually. He's a huge, huge football player and he's, and he's really nimble as well. You saw him there on that last play, a, a nice block there on the defensive end. Jaden Jones, a monster player. You highlighted big 55 on the other side, big 77. Also doing work on that O-line. There goes Albert. Tight rope in the sideline. It's going to be pay dirt. Another touchdown for the Auburn commit, Jacoby Albert. Just a fantastic individual effort there by Albert. How about this? You get the touchdown on the last drive. You get the interception to set up this touchdown. And this is an easy play for Hanley, just an easy pass. And with a guy as fast as he is, you have to make sure that you put your shoulder pads on him and throw him out of bounds because if not, he can make you pay. That's touchdown number two on the day. And Auburn fans, you know, have to be really, really juiced about what they're seeing so far from number 11. Yeah, if you don't know about him, you know about him now. Jamari Steele Johnson, defensive back for center point, came up a little too aggressive. Couldn't put on the brakes. You're certainly not going to get a guy like Albert down with an arm tackle. And then it was Albert just from a dead stop taking off as the kick is up and good. Second consecutive successful point after touchdown by DeAndre Poole. And it's 14 to 6. 14 unanswered by the Fairfield Tigers. The home crowd loves it. Keon Hanley loves it. We love it because it's high school football. We're back to Fairfield in a moment. Every bank has their own app, but it's just that, theirs, not yours. At AmFirst, our app was made for you. So it's easy to pay bills, deposit checks, or transfer money to friends and family from anywhere. It's even customizable, which means you can personalize your dashboard, create usage alerts, and redeem points for rewards you'll love. And you can do it all on your own time. So what are you waiting for? Get the app made for you at AmFirst. Well, if you caught the first, I don't know, five minutes of this one, tune back in just now. You said, w what happened? Well, uh, that gentleman, head coach Keon Hanley, his Fairfield Tigers, they woke up. And a big reason why, Gerhard, is a guy that committed to Auburn. He's going to be playing in the SEC. And it's Jacoby Albert. He's done a little bit of everything. He has both sides of the ball. And he's also a big player on their special teams as well. That time, he was able to not only get the interception, but then capitalize off the interception. Great individual effort there by Albert. Great running as well. We talked about that big offensive line for Fairfield. This is what we would like to call complimentary football. A lot of it, as you said, by number 11, Albert. And you started to see some of that frustration set in because center point had such a great start to this game. And you're starting to see some of that frustration and probably will bleed into this call here. We'll see if they call it, go both sides or Caught on center point or Fairfield. Well, Not sure who actually started this one. You see the flags there. If I'm reading lips, and I saw Keon Handley, the head coach, he came out there. He wanted an explanation. Mm -hmm. It looked like it might have been Tayon Martin, who was whistled for at number 27 for the Fairfield Tigers. As the official came in from the side, official who threw the flag, and now the officials will get together. And if that's the case, it's a bad break. It's the second time you've seen a negative play. We saw it the last time of the late hit out of bounds. Your team gets momentum. You're building a lead. You got to try to keep that momentum, and you don't need to help out. Exactly, and there you saw the unsportsmanlike. Looks like it on both sides, and they'll offset there. So at, it's, a, it's a good teaching moment, I think, for both coaches to say, hey, guys, this could have easily been 15 yards, as we saw last time with Fairfield. And, of course, this is a rivalry game. Uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, the teams know each other. Sure. A lot of these players know each other. And of course, anytime you get into a rivalry situation and those competitive juices get flowing, but you want to be able to kind of maintain that, bottle it up, and then channel it to your play on the field. 
Tabari Collier leading center point out. They had a fourth and nine on their last possession, ended up in an interception with Jacoby Albert. Coming up from strong safety to pick it off, and then moments later, he catches a screen pass from his quarterback and takes it to the house. This guy can take it to the house as well. It's Troy Bruce Jr. Should be good for an Amphers first down as Troy Bruce Jr. had the touchdown, showed the shiftiness, the athleticism on the first drive. He's showing it here, and he's doing it behind some good blocks up front, and especially number 78 leading the way on that offensive line for the center point Eagles. And it looks like he didn't even stop blocking there. The, the big fellow right there with the block, and also Demario Hicks as well. James Daniels, 6'1", 350 pounds. We got some big boys playing tonight. Both sides of the ball. On the first down, Bruce again across midfield into Tiger territory. So he's knocked down from behind, but it'll be second down and short. It's creating the space and not a bad block up front from the Eagles number 52 on the offensive line. That's Evan Swan. This looks a little bit like what we saw Fairfield do when they were able to get the momentum, snatch the momentum back into this game, running in between the tackles. And that time they've called on their bell cow, Troy Bruce Jr. And he's done it twice so far. So now second and medium to so the playbook wide open. Yeah, they ruled that Bruce knee hit there. Shy of where he ended up, that pass incomplete. Jabari Collier looking once again to Camarius Horn. Interesting third down call here with the momentum completely shifted on both sides of the ball over to Fairfield. Can center point keep this drive alive? Keep those chains moving now on third and six. going to be a fourth down once again. So when it looked like center point was turning to form, Fairfield defense standing up and forcing another decision for George Bates and the Eagles. Nine minutes left and trailing 14-6. Looks like they'll keep that offense on the field. We will see what they do here as the Eagles really, really facing a a big play here. It cannot afford to get Fairfield the ball back as much as they are rolling. Fairfield saying Bruce didn't get the yard to make. And given just the vantage point from here where the official from the far side of the field is spotting the football. He might be just shy. It's going to be close. Had a long three yards to get on fourth down. Did a good job there of stretching it out at the very end. And if he is able to pick up the first down, it looks like the referee will call a timeout here for a measurement. If he is able to do so, credit that second effort there by Bruce Jr. <laughs> there you see one of the Fairfield defenders. That was Zamari Tate. Zamari and Tate looking, got on his knees to check and see from his vantage point if there was a first down. It's that close. Even a lot of the players don't know yet. So we'll get an official measurement here and see where it is. But this is a big play in this football game because of just how much Fairfield is rolling right now. We'll see if it comes another turnover. And their turnover on downs. First down here for the Eagles. You saw the body language from George Bates. <laughs> and this could be pivotal, keeping the drive alive or turning it back over. And boy, you talk about close. Super close. 
Fairfield saying no, the official agrees. So coming up, an inch or two short, George Bates telling his team, let's go. Eight and a half left here in this second quarter, and they're trying to keep this at a 14-6 Fairfield lead. There you saw the outstretched ball right there to see if they could get just a little bit more. And Troy Bruce Jr. does a good job of falling down. He's been doing that in this entire game. And unable to pick up the first down, so you have a a turnover by way of interception on the last drive. Albert gets the interception. A few plays later, gets the touchdown on offense. This time, the defense comes through, gets the turnover on downs. And Fairfield can really pull this one wide open if they can score here. It's a big series for both squads. And first, first down. So we'll see the Tigers coming back on the field. Offense took a while to shake the rust. Here in the first action of 2021, Keon Hanley and the Tigers, but they got it going by way of the run and big plays through the air. And that's what, what happens. You had so much success as the flag comes in on the ground with Hezekiah Hudson Davis. And there you're, you're in Eagle score uh, territory. And what happens? The Eagles, they bunch everything, try right. to stop the run, and then on slant pass, what else can we say, but Jacoby Albert, exactly. that athleticism, he's a tough matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly, and, and you mentioned how they set it up, and that was the key for the Tigers. And I think for Fairfield at the beginning of this game, they weren't able to get that run game going on and credit the center point defense for a lot of that. But then here over the course of the last, say, 10 minutes, it has been all Fairfield offensively and really doing it both ways. And as you mentioned, because they have to respect that running game so much between the tackles, they're able to get it on the outside with the pass game. And Trevor Pearson hitting the toss. So plenty of weapons in the backfield to go to for Keon Hanley. See the junior, 5'9", 180 pounds. Eagles able to hold him to the two-yard game. Black rolling. Here in this second quarter. Trying the middle again. A little bit more success for Pearson as the pile moved it. About two, three yards. And there you see the middle of that defense leading the way for the center point Eagles, Gerald Perry. It's a good series so far for the Eagles. Setting up right where they want them now. Third. It's going to be a, about eight yards here. And we'll see what Fairfield dials up. But this is a, a big series here, a big play for the center point defense. You got Albert one-on-one -on, -one on the bottom of the screen. Call, you're looking the other way as he fires it deep. And complete. He was looking for Jadon Gilbert, sophomore wide receiver, but pretty good coverage and the closest guy to it. And back there, maybe playing a little bit of center field was Camarius Horn. Exactly, and you see where Fairfield Understanding it was a, night, a big play there, and you saw the arm talent by Hanley. As we mentioned earlier, just a sophomore. He's got a cannon. We've seen him on multiple occasions today showing that arm talent, but it is fourth down, and so it looks like center point will get the football back, and that's exactly what you wanted out of your defense. Getting the stop, and we'll see the Eagle offense barring anything crazy here. However, let's keep in mind that their punter is Jacoby Albert. So anything is possible when you get the ball to number 11. Yeah, and center point knows it. There's so far, they've been unsuccessful at trying to stop it. It's even more frustrating. You know they're going to go to him, they go to him, and. He's still busting off big plays. He 
Back there to punt as well. Good coverage. As he angles that one towards the sideline and coming up to make the special teams play. Jeremiah Hudson Davis. WOTM, your exclusive TV home for the AHSAA championship events. And the Super 7. Of course, basketball, baseball. Had bowling this year. That's right. Softball. Really fun 2021 2020 campaign. As we said earlier last week, the state of Alabama, one of the only ones in the entire country to be able to get all the champions crowned. And we look forward to see a lot of championship events here over the course of the 2020 2021 season. Troy Bruce Jr., before he could get going, the turf monster came up, grabbed him. The surface here, the synthetic surface. He's saying that's on me as he tried to cut. And the cleats couldn't grab hold. The second down for center point. It's a good shot there of Coach Anthony Drew calling in the plays for his quarterback, Jabari Collier. They were clicking there in the first quarter. Haven't had much success since then. Bruce having to turn it back inside and turning him back. The Fairfield defender coming up to make the stick was Ronald Wyndham, the defensive tackle with a good hustle play there. An official timeout on the field. 5.46 left here from Clements Field. It's still Fairfield 14, center point six. A new automobile is not something you buy every day, month, or year. But when it's time for you to purchase a new vehicle, we want you to think of Team One, Proster Dodge Jeep Ram, and Gadsden. Here, our number one goal is customer service and satisfaction. We offer some of the best-selling, most award-winning vehicles in the world, like Jeep and Ram trucks. Here at Team One CDJR, we want to show you that you are number one. Team One, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, 12th and Megan in Gadsden. Welcome to the award-winning Chakalaka Park in Oxford, Alabama. We believe Chakalaka Park is the place to be and our fans agree. Describing the park as breathtaking, professional, and fun for all. With plenty of parking, restrooms, concessions, and a top-notch staff, we are confident your experience will be second to none. Join us today at Chakalaka Park. Well, that's a game you and I know <laughs> very well. All too well. Oh, yeah. Our history there, the over the mountain rivalry. That's Robert Scarehart, Mathangani. Coming up, you've got Vestavia and Homewood. WABM live on My 68, and it's going to re air right here on WOTM coming up Saturday at 9 a.m. Homewood, a winner. Kicked a field goal on the road at Hillcrest in their opener. And we talked about it. Mount Brook looked very impressive. And, you know, Vestavia, they want to get the taste out of their mouth after starting the era post Hall of Famer Buddy Anderson. Exactly. Coach Calhoun and the bunch, we do expect them to bounce back. You and I mentioned it. We're former Homewood Patriots, so we know that rivalry very well. And I went to church in Vestavia, so I know that Rebel community is used to being one of the top dogs and football of course they play in that very tough 7a region three and so we'll be able to track their progress all year long should be a great game collier rolling out off one foot throws it up and there's the flag coming out just to get it away maybe a dangerous pass is collier was looking harold holloman running down the seam two defenders there one of them According to the official interference, is Jacaris Braxton, one of those guys, not sure the Tiger that they ended up calling it on as Braxton heads off to the sideline. There was a point in time it looked like they called it on either one. We have a, another great look right there as you saw the, the, probably the most obvious pass interference call in the history of PI. Now it's a big play there on third and seven. And, and you understand what the Fairfield Depots was trying to do there, just trying not to give up the pass, but that one was an easy one for the officials there. And first I'm gonna, down. I'm going to say they, they probably got it on Braxton, just given the fact that he had two hands clutching jersey <laughs> and actually taking wide receiver to ground. <laughs> he made a play on, on the receiver when he should have been playing on the football. But 
That's a first down nonetheless. But how about this? It, it beats a 70-yard touchdown. That's exactly right. And, and if you're Fairfield, that's how you have to think about it. Even though we're starting to see a little bit of momentum here for, for center point, you'd rather give up the 15 than the 7. You take an am first, first down any way you can get it right now if you're George Bates. You want to get some points back on the board as the scoring drought continues, scoring early. Almost three minutes into the game, it was the Eagles going on top, making it look easy, and then nothing has really gone right on offense since that point. Exactly, and credit to the Fairfield defense really getting themselves together and being able to play both the run and the pass. Sound defense, we saw some great plays early on, especially in the later stages of that first quarter. Good pass rush and great discipline play there by the Fairfield defense. However, a nice play call, great execution there by center point, and it looks like they're able to pick up the first down. Yeah, the quick hitter, getting your offensive lineman. Look at big James Daniels, 78. For correction, that was not James Daniel. That's another big player. But James Daniels, six foot one, 350 pounds. You saw the hustle all over the field. Exactly, and that's what, that's how you know when you have those athletic offensive linemen that can get out on the perimeter and create blocks downfield that help spring your. Wide receivers that time with a little too much zip on that pass there for Coyer. Yeah, Malik Brown, the intended receiver, he, he found himself all alone, but as you mentioned, too much mustard, too high. The young Eagle quarterback trying to settle down. Here on second down and 10. As you see, under five minutes left here in this first half. Dangerous pass there. It looked like they tried to have the screen set up. The problem is nobody from Fairfield applied the pressure. Everybody stayed back, and it was Troy Bruce Jr. that was left out hanging. Exactly. It looks like they, they tried to set up the screen there, but even if he was able to get it, it looks like the Fairfield defense was in great position. At that time, kind of throwing off the back foot. It just not the way you want to draw it up there and so now we're sitting on third and 10 once again so another third down situation for center point last time they they just chucked it right up the field and they were able to get a pass interference call to kept the chains moving see what they do this time Chris Vaughn's you saw him briefly number 54 for Fairfield causing problems for the Eagles but causing problems for the Fairfield defense on this possession has been the pass interference calls on third down and 10. Looked like good coverage, but getting there too soon, one of the Tiger defensive backs, and it looks like the Eagles and George Bakes, they're going to benefit from another 15-yard penalty instead of being a drive stopper and possibly kicking it away or having fourth down and long. Now you get an Amherst first down, and the chains are going to move. Back-to-back -back plays there. You saw... The number 17 he made a good play when he actually played the ball, but beforehand committed the penalty. And once again, another first down for center point. So as much momentum as this Fairfield defense had, two third down penalties. And once again, that ball keeps moving in the direction that center point wants. Victor Gaines, the cornerback. Gerhard just told you. You could probably see it there with the handle on the back of the jersey before the ball arrived. Pretty easy call for the officials. So on the Amherst first down. Center point stacks it up to the right, the lone receiver. And there goes Troy Bruce Jr. That's what you expect from this running attack. The Amherst first down, good for 11 yards. Very reminiscent of what we saw earlier in this football game, running right between the tackles. You mentioned earlier, Big number 78, James Daniels, helping lead the way. Got down here last time, and they ran that delayed handoff. A little short of that first down there, but a nice play by center point. Then on the kind of the hurry up play, they were able to get Collier to the outside, and he'll pick it up. Prophetic, it is an Amherst first down. Coming up short, 
on that previous play. But when you have to honor a guy like Troy Bruce Jr., Jabari Collier, that's a, a big reason why these two were battling for the quarterback spot in the preseason last year. And George Bates said, you know what? How about Troy, you move to running back. Right. Jabari, you play quarterback. And we got two great athletes on the field. Exactly. And I won't be a bit surprised to see the other one toss the ball as well. And that time, it was going right back to Bruce there. Nice shot there, Chris Devons. But you mentioned, I think the key word that you used was honor. You have to honor both of them. You have to play them both true. That time, they go back to Bruce. So it was Bruce Collier back to Bruce. <laughs> we'll see if Collier scores a touchdown here. Collier, stretch over the end zone. Turn back at the one-foot line, maybe the one-yard line, by the Fairfield Tigers. Well, that time, Bruce helping lead the charge with the blocking. And this is the exact way that we saw them execute on offense in the first drive, and it looks like they have found it once again on that second drive, and, and you're seeing there it's a hot day over in Birmingham, and you see the... Heavy breathing there by the Tiger defense as they're trying to keep them out of the end zone here on third down. You saw Jacoby Albert. He was sitting there paying attention from his cornerback spot to Bruce. And it was almost too late. Indication coming from the officials. I gotta say, fourth down. Oh, good stand there by Fairfield. Third down play. Come up with the big tackle. Trying to run behind oh, yeah. big James Daniel. Mm -hmm. 78, you feel good about it. Troy Bruce making it into the end zone but they ruled that he was just shy. So a timeout on the field. George Bates and his center point Eagles already faced with some fourth downs earlier in this game. Right. This is their biggest fourth down conversion attempt the so last, far. Last five plays have been Bruce, Collier, Bruce, Collier, and then Bruce. You go quarterback sneak here with Collier and just go straight over the top. I mean, they're, they're right there. They're talking about it right now, obviously, but Collier will be able to get the snap unless they go a direct snap, and it, it's been a great running game so far for these Eagles. An all-important drive for the Eagles before halftime, and you want to drive, check out our friends at Sarah Automotive. Sarah Ford, Nissan, Honda, great selection of vehicles, a great staff to take care of you. It's Sarah Automotive. Glad to have them on board here on WOTM. If he's not playing the low post in basketball season, <laughs> I, I need to talk to the, to the coach. Six foot nine, 315 pounds. When you talk about the heavy set comes in for these goal line packages, this is about what you expect with the heavy set, the heaviest player on the football team for the Tigers. Collier behind his center, and he's across the goal line for the touchdown. Well, it wasn't easy. Give Fairfield credit. It took a lot of plays and a lot of time, but the Eagles adding to their point total, ending the scoring drought, and Collier did not get it by much. But he worked behind that offensive line, got enough body lean. And there within two, a Fairfield Tiger player down as they tend to him. George Bates looked like he was signaling for the extra point, but we will wait. Hopefully just a cramp. Early indications, that's what it is. We have the official heat timeouts here in the first few weeks of the high school season with the humidity and the weather, obviously, Gerhard. And that's good to see that uh, the Fairfield player getting up, maybe shaking that one out. And that's Zamarian Tate, outside linebacker, defensive end, 6'1", 220-pound senior. Hydration very important this time of year, and as you mentioned, it looks like a cramp, and I'll tend to him on the sideline there on that last play, six foot one, 220 pounds, but center point finding some offense there on that last drive. 
and it was all Bruce and Collier. Literally the last six plays, it was it was one after the other, one after the other, and they were able to score. But because they missed the extra point there the first time around, and Fairfield's got two touchdowns and two extra points, the Eagles now forced to go for two. Whistle stops play. This pass was completed, but stopped really before it ever got started. This will make it more interesting. The center point will back up. I saw George Bates, and, and maybe that was he was he was kicking the right the right leg during the injury. Right. I don't know if that's a play. <laughs> or, or, or maybe he changed his mind. Exactly. And. Who knows if they have to change their mind once again here. It becomes a little bit different of a play call here. And because timeouts don't carry over, you might as well take them on now. So looks like center point will call another. Talk this one over right before they go back on defense. And Coach Drew will once again get with his guys on this big fourth down play. For the, or sorry, big two-point conversion play for the Eagles. Good shot there of Coach Hanley. His Tigers found the momentum kind of early in the middle part of that first quarter and then definitely going into the second quarter. Many thanks to the play of Jacoby Bra Albert. And so far, those big time plays from a penalty standpoint that really kept their defense on the field that last year. You see the game we've had here in this first half. Here's a good look at what we're going to have. For all the Thursdays we have coming up for high school football on WOTM, next week, Woodlawn and Mountain Brook, Pleasant Grove and Winona. How about Opelika, Carver, Montgomery, Oxford and Gadsden City. New coach there in Oxford, new coach at Oak Mountain, taking on Spain Park. And then and you saw the finale and then some of those dates to be decided. One thing you can be guaranteed of, they're on the two-point conversion. And they call it good, so we have a tie game as we're going to have quality football like this one all season long here on WOTM. Exactly. And that was a great play call here. After a heavy dose of Bruce and Collier, that time they go to the air and they hit bold Malik Brown there for the touchdown and a nice play. Nice play call and nice execution there by the Eagles. Well, Collier, he didn't want to overdo it there, but he almost underdid it. Right. As he put a little bit too much finesse and, and a good job. As you mentioned, Malik Brown coming up to save this two-point conversion. Gets the hands under. You know what? We'll give it to him. Give him an A for effort. Exactly. And I know the Fairfield coaches, out there they look back at that. They all say, hey, I don't, I don't know about that one. But, but here's the thing. The was it conclusive? Right. Even if we went to replay, exactly. was it conclusive? I, and I don't think so. I mean, it, we have to be able to see it, obviously, from a multiple sides there, but I don't think so. I think even in a game where we had reviewed that, call would have stand. And we have a 14-14 game. Keep, keep in mind those two huge penalties, a, a penalty on third down and then a little bit later, a pass interference penalty on third down that kept that drive alive and. I think that's one of the things that Coach Hanley will talk to his group about going into halftime is, hey, we don't give up that last touchdown if we don't have those two penalties there on that drive. And so lots of things to talk about for both coaches, I think, going into the final frames. So you see Coach Hanley's son, quarterback Eric Hanley, back out on the field. Just a sophomore, but a coach's son, and, and you know, it's not a cliche, it's coach's sons. They're aware, quarterbacking that offense, knowing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to run away from defenders, and that's exactly what he's doing on first down as he's able to turn what looked like it should have been a play that lost yardage into a four-yard gain. And now with the clock moving, minute 20 left, Gerhard here in this first half, you get the Tigers back to the line, and. Try to get that Amherst first down. Wisely slides there and picks up a few yards, as you mentioned. One of the reasons why you see a lot of 
coaches' sons as quarterbacks is because they they become film junkies and they they are right there with their fathers as they're crunching down film and their IQ gets uh, to be a little bit on a better learning curve there overall. Pass complete. Stepping out of bounds wisely. It's Hezekiah Hudson Davis, the running back. He'll be a yard shy. Brings up a third manageable with 50 seconds left. Not only that, but you, you have to go home with that. Right, right. You're not, you're not just leaving the field house and, and going and coming back to practice maybe the next day on a Thursday night game or coming back on Sunday to watch film. Mm -hmm. no, you got to hear it all weekend from Dad. Exactly. And especially when once you become the starter. It's one thing when you're 6, 7, 8, 10 years old, and it's another thing when you're the starting quarterback of the team. It's, it's football almost 24-7 when you're not in class. And first, first down. Hudson Davis able to get it, going across the middle and trying to find Jabari Bennett. Was Collier. I haven't been able to hang on. In traffic, sliding. Would have been a nice pass and catch. Not a bad throw by Collier. Got a couple of Eagles there defending in the secondary. But no harm done. Second down and 10 with the clock stopped. 46 seconds left. It was a 6 0 center point lead. Fairfield with 14 unanswered. And then right before halftime, we just saw it. Long drive, center point, able to benefit on a couple of miscues by Fairfield defensively. The Tigers, they stood their ground, but it was a fourth down and goal. Where center point was able to get in the end zone, converting the two-point conversion. Collier will not be able to escape the rush this time. As three Fairfield Tigers converging on that stop. And one of those young men, you just saw him right there. So center point, Evan Swan, Rangy senior, 6'4", 210, as you saw his listed height and weight. After that play, I think that's go going to kind of inform the decision here by Fairfield. Let's let's not get ourselves in any more trouble. Let's take it to halftime. Right, well, it's 14-14 here at the half. And we will try to check in with one of our head coaches as the teams head off to their locker rooms. And after 24 minutes of football, Got to be impressed with the way that both of these teams have come out. One team scheduled to play last week. The forfeit, you did not have Fairfield. So these coaches learning a lot about their teams to the first half of high school football for 2021. That's exactly right. And I think for Coach Bates, he understood kind of where he's, his team was overall and got a nice chance to see them in the first half of play. And then we'll have Fairfield coach Keon Hanley here in a bit. Absolutely. All right, Coach Keon Hanley, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, your impressions, center point coming out with the touchdown early. What did you tell your team, and what did you see the response from your team there in the rest of the first quarter and then closing out the half? The biggest thing for us, we just got to settle down. We got to settle down to play our brand of football. We got to get our run game fixed, uh, keep our defense off the field. And we got to establish the run. We showed some life, but we got to continue to improve upon it. Coach Jacoby Albert had a fantastic first half. Talk about his ability to, to impact the game, both on the offensive side as well as defense. I mean, the kid is a natural playmaker. Uh, we got to find more ways to get him the ball, but we got other playmakers. We got to get them involved too. And since I'm the play caller, that's piss poor on my part, and I got to do a better job. All right, Coach, what is your message going to be to your team at halftime? Finish. Man, short and sweet. Point like play, Thank you, Coach. Just finish. <laughs> All, right, All right, Coach, thank you for taking time. That's Keon Hanley, head coach of the Fairfield Tigers. His team responded. They've got to respond. they got to finish, as he said. 14-14. We're tied. What a great one we have. It's Thursday night high school football here on WOTM.
WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. It's back to school time, and Sarah is paying your sales tax on new and pre-owned vehicles. Upgrade to a nicer, newer Ford, Honda, or Nissan, and the Sarah dealerships of Silicaga will pay your sales tax. That is a huge savings. We're paying your sales tax on new or select pre-owned vehicles on our lot. You heard right. We pay your sales tax. Interest rates are at historic lows. There's never been a better time to get more for your money. Plus, we've never paid more for your trade-in. Get a cash offer, even if you don't buy from us. We'll pay you 1000 more than any other written offer. Other dealers may be low on inventory, but at Sarah Dealership, we're stepping on the gas and loading up our lot. Come in today and get more Ford, Honda, and Nissan for your money at the Sarah Dealership of Silicago on Highway 280, and we'll pay your sales tax. Must finance at least 75% of purchase price with dealer preferred lender at dealer asking price. Not available in all pre-owned vehicles. See dealer for details. Drive it, love it. Since 1848, First Bank of Alabama has been dedicated to our customers and excellence in all areas. With constant improvements to our facilities, to adding new products and services to better serve you, our team is fully engaged in all the communities we serve. First Bank of Alabama knows that time is money, so we offer hometown services with advanced technology that allows you to bank on your own schedule. We want to be your community bank, so stop by. Come see us at First Bank of Alabama, where you're always first. Hi, I'm Courtney. Welcome to Team One Hyundai. If you want the absolute most and best out of your dollars, you have to choose Hyundai. Over the years, Hyundai has grown leaps and bounds from general transportation to the luxury, family, sporty brand that you want and need. If you didn't already know, Hyundai comes with America's best warranty, Hyundai Assurance, three full years of complimentary maintenance and 24 hour roadside assistance. Welcome back in halftime, 14-14, Lynch Roberts, Gerhardt, Math and Ghani. As we come to you from Clemens Field, Fairfield got off to the slow start, taking on the Center Point Eagles. This was a game last year. It was a doozy in 2020, the Eagles winning 21-20. It started out, looked like it was going to be Center Point with a quick score on offense. Troy Bruce Jr., he showed early why he's their go-to guy, but impressed with the way Fairfield Gerhard was able to come back and score 14 unanswered, and you know the guy that they did it through. Exactly. It's Jacoby Albert, who Coach talked about just a moment ago. The Auburn commit committed last week and really giving Auburn fans a lot to cheer for and a lot to be excited about in game number one here for the Fairfield Tigers. Not only did he have the first touchdown of the game, but they, I think his interception – Deep there in Fairfield territory, and then bang, right after that, a big play to score the second touchdown. Has both touchdowns on the board for Fairfield. And I think he kind of really helped set this offense and the defense in motion. That was that first touchdown on the slant pass, and then it was able to get the interception here. That was a big play by that Fairfield defense. And then just moments later, being able to bang, just like that, get the end zone there for Fairfield, but then a good response there by the Eagles later on. We continue, it's halftime, it's 14-14. WOTM, it's Thursday Night Football. Every bank has their own app, but it's just that, theirs, not yours. At AmFirst, our app was made for you. So it's easy to pay bills, deposit checks, or transfer money to friends and family from anywhere. It's even customizable, which means you can personalize your dashboard, create usage alerts, and redeem points for rewards you'll love. And you can do it all on your own time. 
So what are you waiting for? Get the app made for you at AmFirst. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. At Team One Toyota, you'll always find the car you want at a price you'll love. And shopping with Team One Toyota is like no other experience. Right now, you can custom order your brand new Toyota. You can pick the color you want, the trim you want, the interior you want, all the equipment and technology you want. And this month, when you come into the dealership to custom order your Toyota with us, we'll take an additional $500 off. A lot is changing in the car business because we're the ones changing. Choose Team One Toyota, where we're driven by great people and great prices. Since 1848, First Bank of Alabama has been dedicated to our customers and excellence in all areas. With constant improvements to our facilities, to adding new products and services to better serve you, our team is fully engaged in all the communities we serve. First Bank of Alabama knows that time is money, so we offer hometown services with advanced technology that allows you to bank on your own schedule. We want to be your community bank, so stop by. Come see us at First Bank of Alabama, where you're always first. Well, we welcome you back into Fairfield, Alabama. Fairfield and center point. The Tigers and the Eagles. We expected a good one. 14-14, Landry Roberts, Gerhard, Math and Ghani. Thanks for joining us here on WOTM. Your home for high school football on Thursday nights as well as Friday nights all season long. Gerhard, what we saw from these teams, George Bates and the Eagles. We knew how he felt about his team coming in. The most complete team he's had here in his fourth season with the Eagles. The only senior class he's been able to see as a head coach in his high school career. And you saw early why he talked about those playmakers, and it started with a young quarterback. Exactly. You saw the quarterback with both Collier and with Troy Bruce Jr. really getting it done on that first drive. It did a little bit, a little bit later on in the last drive. However, the momentum really turned around. I think at this point here, because on that punt gave Fairfield the, the football back, and then a little bit later on, Fairfield was able to, to score. There you see some great defense there by the Eagles. But you mentioned on the inside and the outside of it, big Hezekiah Hudson Davis there with a nice run. And they were able to use both the run and the pass to get themselves into the end zone. We talked about earlier, Jacoby Albert. Yeah, Hezekiah Hudson Davis, the guy doing it on the ground for the Tigers. That set up the Albert touchdown. And then Albert getting the ball back from a strong safety possession. Then just a couple of moments later, it was Albert on the outside, hit the brakes, had the Eagle defender fly right by, Top Gun style, and he takes it to the house. Exactly, but then a great answer by center point a little bit later on. Two huge penalties on this drive, both on third down. A P.I. right there, and then again right here. That led to the touchdown for center point. They went from Collier to Bruce, Collier to Bruce, and then Collier ended up getting the touchdown. The two-point conversion is good, and that's how we have a 14-14 game in this one. A classic game last year. It looks like to be another classic game this year. We're back with the game of the week coming up next. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amfirst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Right now at Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor, the keyword is free. Buy any type of flooring at Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor and we'll install it absolutely free. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, laminate, or vinyl, get it professionally installed absolutely free. Why pay to have your new floor installed when you can have it installed absolutely free and get 0% financing for an entire year? That's right, free interest for an entire year and free installation. That's Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor's free installation sale going on right now. 
It's back to school time, and Sarah is paying your sales tax on new and pre-owned vehicles. Upgrade to a nicer, newer Ford, Honda, or Nissan, and the Sarah dealerships of Silicaga will pay your sales tax. That is a huge savings. We're paying your sales tax on new or select pre-owned vehicles on our lot. You heard right. We pay your sales tax. Interest rates are at historic lows. There's never been a better time to get more for your money. Plus, we've never paid more for your trade-in. Get a cash offer, even if you don't buy from us. We'll pay you 1000 more than any other written offer. Other dealers may be low on inventory, but at Sarah Dealership, we're stepping on the gas and loading up our lot. Come in today and get more Ford, Honda, and Nissan for your money at the Sarah Dealership of Silicago on Highway 280, and we'll pay your sales tax. Must finance at least 75% of purchase price with dealer preferred lender at dealer asking price. Not available in all pre-owned vehicles. See dealer for details. Drive it, love it. Well, fans at Clements Field enjoying not only a great football game, but an entertaining halftime performance from the Fairfield Tiger Marching Band, Landry Roberts, Gerhard, Math and Gunny. Glad you're with us here on WOTM. Glad to bring you great Thursday night football, as we will all season long. We've got a great one so far with Centerpoint and Fairfield nodded at 14 but what's also great is being able to spotlight so many student athletes from across the state of alabama in all the fall sports across all the classifications exactly and we will start with cross country where Asheville high school junior joe stevens and glencoe high school junior carrie giles capturing the individual races at the wildcat twilight 5k now i've run a couple of 5ks how about this time stevens ran it in 1744 Meanwhile, Giles, she also won a state championship last year. She ran in 21-19, blazing fast times. A great start over at Wildcat Territory at White Plains. Yeah, how about this? Pike Rhodes, Iverson, Hooks. It leads the Patriots to, well, I would say, a record-setting victory. How about a 76-51 in this game? Huge, huge game. 16 rushes, 307 yards, and five touchdowns in that game. A, just a fantastic start there for Iverson Hooks and, a, and a, obviously a great start by Pike Road. Now the new number one team in the state. Absolutely. Be the scoreboard operator in that one. Exactly. It looks sound like more like a basketball score. And then our final one over in volleyball at Spain Park, grabbing the first Juanita Bodie title, first championship in school history. And the Jaguars made it to the 7A state championship game last year. They're off to a great start this year. They've won 10 straight matches to start the season off. Juanita Bodie Tournament at the championship there. Great job by the AHSAA with the spotlights. Head over to AHSAA.com. You'll be able to see those and read those in their entirety. Yeah, you'll be able to see them. We'll spotlight them every single week here on WOTM. We'll get the second half cranked up for you next here on WOTM. Every bank has their own app, but it's just that, theirs, not yours. At AmFirst, our app was made for you. So it's easy to pay bills, deposit checks, or transfer money to friends and family from anywhere. It's even customizable, which means you can personalize your dashboard, create usage alerts, and redeem points for rewards you'll love. And you can do it all on your own time. So what are you waiting for? Get the app made for you at AmFirst. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game-winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late-night bus ride home after a hard-fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine if it never happened at all. School sports need your help. With budgets getting tighter, it's more than the games that are on the line. It's all the traditions, the community pride, the culture of your hometown high school, plus all those memories that are on the line too. What can you do? It's simple. Buy a ticket when you can. Go to a game. Take the whole family. Let's do everything we can 
to keep those cherished school sports memories alive. This message presented by the Alabama High School Athletic Association and the Alabama High School Athletic Directors and Coaches Association. Welcome back. Halftime almost concluding. We saw the Fairfield High School marching band. Both these coaches addressing their teams. We heard from Keon Hanley, the Fairfield Tiger head coach. Major Roberts, Gerhard, Mathangani. What we heard from him is finish. He blamed right. himself for some of the play calling, but fortunately, after falling behind 6 nothing, his team was able to respond, and they responded in a big way. Exactly, and one of the things you want to see, especially in the early on, early parts of the season if can you recover from your mistakes quickly and can you not make that mistake again and I think he has a lot of teaching moments there at the half and you mentioned it and we've talked about it before the fantastic play of Jacoby Albert will bail them sometimes out of bad positions but you don't want to rely on that he talked about the fact they have multiple playmakers so we'll expect to see well, a lot of guys not only getting the ball but being featured in that offense and in the defense I think both coaches had a lot to talk about their team as far as patting them on the back but both coaches have a lot to say as far as things that they can clean up there in the third and fourth quarters yeah give credit to his son the quarterback That's Coach right. Hanley's son who did a great job and Hezekiah Hudson Davis who provided that spark for the running back position. We saw some of the big runs, and that set up the passing game for a Fairfield Tiger team that was able to show that they could be proficient and then Albert doing the rest. Exactly, and we'll see how much of that continues here in the second half, how much they continue to run between the tackles, what center point does to maybe counteract that. Do they add another guy? Do they bring another guy into the box to stop that? However, as you mentioned, Hanley has an arm, so you have to stay true to both to the run game and the pass game. Meanwhile, on the flip side for the Eagles, they've been running the football really well, especially in that second quarter. Do they stick with that Bruce Collier tandem that they've had so far? A lot of success early on. Yeah, that defense of Fairfield, we know what they did last year. They're starting off the same way this year. We start the second half. We come back here on WOTM. Now offering Tempur-Pedic's newest Pro Breeze cooling mattress. Cooler when you lie down, cooler when you fall asleep, and cooler all night long. Wellness spaces are also available. Visit King's Mattress Gallery downtown Sylacauga today. Your local Sealy and Tempur-Pedic retailer. We were looking to sell our starter home and move into our dream home. After looking at all the options, we chose to work with ERA King. ERA means easy, responsive, and attention to detail. ERA King made the entire process of buying and selling a house easy. From helping us decide on a listing price to navigating the final closing, our agent worked with us every step of the way. ERA King. To us, it means always doing the right thing for every client. What will ERA mean to you? Find out at eraking.com. If you want the absolute most and best out of your dollars, you have to choose Hyundai. Over the years, Hyundai has grown leaps and bounds from general transportation to the luxury, family, sporty brand that you want and need. If you didn't already know, Hyundai comes with America's best warranty, Hyundai Assurance, three full years of complimentary maintenance, and 24-hour roadside assistance. Now offering Tempur-Pedic's newest Pro Breeze cooling mattress. Cooler when you lie down, cooler when you fall asleep, and cooler all night long. Wellness spaces are also available. Visit King's Mattress Gallery downtown Sylacauga today. Your local Sealy and Tempur-Pedic retailer. Welcome back to Fairfield, Alabama. Center point in Fairfield tied at 14. Lynch Roberts, Gerhard, Math and Connie here on WOTM. Our Thursday night high school game of the week. We're now being joined by center point head coach, George Bates. Coach, thanks for joining us. First of all, you had to be excited about the way that your offense came out and played that opening possession and able to get the touchdown. Yeah, uh, we talked about trying to start fast, and our uh, offense did that, just that. They had a little lull later on, but they came back in you know, late in the first half. 100%. And, and Coach, you really relied on Collier and Bruce. Number one, talk about the way that that offseason worked between those two, and then here in game one, being able to get both those guys into the action as far as impacting the play offensively. 
Uh, it's going well. You know, everyone knows about Troy Bruce. He's, um, you know, he's an all-state back. Uh, we feel like Collier is a, you know, dual threat guy, so we got to get those guys involved. Also got to get all the um, junior involved, Harold Hall and receiver also. Okay, Coach, uh, finally, we know about last year's battle. What a closely contested game it was with you guys coming out on top. What was the message to your team here at halftime? Oh, uh, they actually beat us last year, 21-20. And uh, we just told them, man, we got to finish. Um, they're a big play team for momentum. We are grinding out, you know, um, and kind of impose our will type of team. So the, the, the person that imposing their will and do and play the game they like, enjoy playing, that's going to win the second half. Coach, thanks for taking time. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Wings up. Wings up. So we got finish and we got wings up, Gerhard. Uh, Coach George Bates. He, he's been at the different stops. We know what he's trying to do and what he has already done with the center point. A football team go to the playoffs last year, but this is a great early test for his team. Having the forfeit last week, it was a late week forfeit. They were scheduled to play the Winona Dragons. They didn't get that game, so he's learning a lot about his team. I guess if he would have had his rathers, he probably would have rather played to get something on film to maybe have that first game, those first game jitters under their belt. Yeah, adversity comes in a lot of forms, and a lot of people just kind of classify it in one form. There's another part of adversity of being able to get your hopes up for game one and then not playing game one and then trying to get it up for game two against a team that you have really no film on outside of what you had from last year. You mentioned it. Very close game last year. A one-point game. Everything is important now. We've already seen a missed extra point from center point. Of course, the special teams will be a thing that they harp on because that can hurt them here in the second half. Luckily for them, they were able to get that two-point conversion. And so now we have a 14-14 game. So shaping up to be, yet again, another great one. Well, things to clear up for both teams on both sides of the ball. The penalties number one you right. got to eliminate those and then the turnovers if you're center point one on special teams and then getting down into Fairfield uh, territory not being able to capitalize coming away with zeros you got to correct that here in the next 24 minutes exactly and both teams have multiple playmakers we saw a lot of Collier and Bruce for the Eagles we saw a lot of Hanley as well as Albert for Fairfield who else can step up for these teams on both sides of the ball will be the question here and you know both coaches have to be really confident in the playmakers they have. And so we'll see who gets it done here in the third and fourth frames as Fairfield will start off with the football. Oh, you want to keep it away from Albert, who was lined up deep for the Tigers. In fact, they do. One of the up men, though, able to grab it for the Tigers. And they'll have nice starting field position to begin this second half of play is Jamaria Hamilton. The freshman came up to field it, got north. He was brought down by Malik Brown. Is I love the candidness, the transparency mm -hmm. from Keon Handley, the head coach of Fairfield. You just saw him briefly. He was talking to his son, the quarterback, uh, who is right there in Eric Handley. But he said poor play calling on his part right. at times. And what he was going to tell his team was finish. Exactly. And, and you called it candidate, and I think it's number one candidate, but it's also honest. And he's not coach speak. A lot of times you kind of get, you know, coach speak terms, but this time I think he really meant it, and that's really what he, he told his son and the other 11. Hezekiah Hudson Davis, he means it. He means it every time he touches the football, and it's an am first, first down. And for the first play of this second half for Fairfield, that looked much like most of the plays where you saw Hudson Davis touching the football. Quick toss to the outside there, and this is a very, very talented running back, and you see the speed along the outside. Look at Hudson Davis. Hezekiah Hudson Davis tries the stiff arm and does the defender and trying to come up to make the play for the center point. Eagles was Harold Holloman, but it's just enough to force him out of bounds. But look at the stop and go and avoiding defenders right there in traffic for the Amherst first down. Just an unbelievably athletic play there. And we've seen two in a row there by Hudson Davis. And this is exactly what got the Fairfield offense rolling in that first quarter. And it looks like they're going right back to it here in the early stages of the second half. And Davis losing his footing. He did have a defender there to greet him. Jamari Steele Johnson, who has been tested a lot tonight. The 5'9 senior plays some wide receiver, also playing in the defensive backfield, but he drew the assignment of Jacoby Albert. 
Right. And that's, that will be tough for everybody on Fairfield's schedule for all the defenders. And as you mentioned, he's did a good job there defending the run. Hanley to Hudson Davis. And that big man, we've called his name a couple of times tonight. What great pursuit finishing the play for center point. And that's one of the reasons why Fairfield was, was held to just the 14. Plays like that, and this, this defense, they have been tested, Gerhard, but you give them credit. Both of these defenses at opportune times doing just enough, and they're going to try to keep the Tigers out of the end zone on third and goal. Exactly. You saw Hudson Davis leaving the field there, touch the ball on all three first plays. We'll see on his status, but once again, they get into the end zone, and once again, they send Albert right over the cross the middle. He comes away with the ball. There is no answer so far to stop number 11. Jacoby Albert. Three touchdowns, an interception. Why not? Faking the handoff to Pearson right over the middle. And again, you know it's coming defensively if you're the Eagles. But there's just not much you can do about it. And, and give the credit also to his quarterback. I mean, he's, he's putting the ball in spots he needs to. And obviously, the chemistry between Eric Handley and Jacoby Albert, the sophomore and the senior, could not be better. Well, Fairfield didn't stay tied long. Fresh out of intermission. They're back on top 21-14. We were looking to sell our starter home and move into our dream home. After looking at all the options, we chose to work with ERA King. ERA means easy, responsive, and attention to detail. ERA King made the entire process of buying and selling a house easy. From helping us decide on a listing price to navigating the final closing, our agent worked with us every step of the way. ERA King. To us, it means always doing the right thing for every client. What will ERA mean to you? Find out at eraking.com. Welcome back. Not even two minutes going by in Fairfield. Getting the ball to start the second half, Keon Hanley said, he better play calling. Well, I don't know if he would say it was better play calling, but the execution was there as Fairfield marches right down the field, and they're able to capitalize and cap it off with another reception from, I would say right now, our player of the game, Jacoby Albert. Uh, 100%. And Albert's been phenomenal both sides of the football. Keep in mind, the reason why the Tigers had such great field position is because the Eagles had to kick it short because he was back there. And then... Ironically, he's the one who ends up with a touchdown, the hat trick with the start of the day. Troy Bruce Jr., you don't want to let him going, get going. And, and the Tigers, good coverage on the special teams not to. He bumped into one man, couldn't bounce off of another, and he's brought down on the return. So while they've been the beneficiaries of good starting field position tonight, they will have to earn this one on their first drive. Exactly. of this third quarter. 100%. One of the things that I really noticed about this Eagle offense, you take away that two-point conversion, which was a pass play. Their last eight plays have been running plays. Bruce and Collier, do they open it up or do they go with what's been getting them into this game to begin with and got them into the game to begin with as far as scoring goes, but then also got them back into the game when they were down? You go to Bruce. Bruce turning a negative play into a positive. He's able to escape there in the backfield. You had two defenders, one, and it was a Fairfield linebacker stepping up, Jahavian Rudolph. Couldn't grab him in the slippery, very shifty athletic junior running back, Troy Bruce Jr., showing you why George Bates in this offense will rely on him throughout the 2021 season. And you heard Coach Bates talk to us about his talents at halftime, everybody knows who he is coming off an All-State year and certainly make his presence felt here in this game. Collier's going to keep it. And he's not going anywhere. Fairfield defensively not fooled on that one as they zeroed in. Jabari Collier, Chris Devons. And he has been all over the football field through the first 27-plus minutes of this one. 
Great assignment defense there. In addition to Devons, you had Zermani Tate there as well, number seven, your linebacker, and playing the option perfectly. Vaughn's has his hands full because he's going up against the six foot one, 350 pound mm -hmm. James Daniel. Right. Collier on the slant is able to complete that pass as he finds Demario Hicks. And maybe that's just what he needs. Collier with some of the short passes to get comfortable. While he's thrown some passes that have been into traffic, he had one that would have been a miraculous catch early in the football game, a one-handed catch near the goal line from his teammate, Harold Holloman. Doesn't seem like he's ever really gotten settled, gotten comfortable as we have a fourth down coming up. Exactly, and so center point will punt here, but you may mention of it. I, I think that what they'll start doing is start trying to design when they when they do go to the passing game, some more short yardage stuff and see if he can get into a groove in the passing game first. Not a bad punt. As Fairfield backs away. And they will mark it down near the 30-yard line. So we've seen the Tigers already in the first half be backed up deep within their own territory. And that's really when things got started. They started doing it via the ground game. Then we saw it again after the interception, the big play on the quick hitter. I don't think you have to be, I don't know, uh, Eric Parsegian, right. Nick Saban. <laughs> Uh, to figure out what you need to do, you, you probably try to find number 11 and get him the football. Exactly. And then if you don't want to give it to him at the beginning because he's maybe double team or triple team, you say, hey, just give it to Hezekiah Hudson Davis, who did a lot of that damage there in that last series. And then you give it to Jacoby Albert to finish it off. It's one of those things. You mentioned it earlier with center points. Pick your poison. And we've gotten to that place now with Fairfield. Is pick your poison both in the run game and the pass game. This guy's done it too. Can't forget about him, Hezekiah. Hudson Davis, and you're right. When I focus on 11, let six loosen up that center point defense, and that's what happened on that touchdown play, the slant in the first half. Everybody started focusing on six, and then you had the one-on-one -on -one of the outside and the athleticism of number 11, Jacoby Albert, made things easy. You really have to play sound defense against this group and then also be able to make one-on-one -on -one tackles. If you're in position, be able to make the tackle one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen it with Albert a couple times already. If you don't, they have a real shot to hurt you. So second down, we'll call it seven. And that pass incomplete as Albert couldn't hang on. Probably wanting that back, Eric Hanley. He let his wide receiver. A little too far there on the boundary. Not a bad idea. Short yardage play there, and looks like Hanley will get the play call here on this important third and six. It'll be a long six yards. As we do have a timeout on the field. 6.45 left in this third quarter. They'll talk things over. Fairfield trying to add to a six-point lead. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. And we'll call it third down and seven. Fairfield after the timeout, working from their own 33. Loading up, firing, incomplete. As Eric Hanley was trying to find an open Victor Gaines, but once again, the sophomore signal caller not able to connect. 
Coach Hanley, he can't blame himself on that play call. It's pretty good dialogue. Exactly what you wanted there, the one-on-one -on -one situation, wide open. You had the success of Alba early on, and there you see father and son talking it over right there. And I'll be a bit surprised if they try to go back to that one a little bit later on in this game. But we're seeing some of the, the early possessions here by Fairfield using a really versatile approach between Hudson Davis and Albert, and then that time trying to get Victor Gaines into the action. Still like what I'm seeing from Eric Hanley. Just as sophomore as there's a flag down, but you look at his size, his frame. He's obviously got plenty of arm. He's a heading quarterback. He's cerebral. But six foot two, 180 pounds. You, you have to think about next year and then his his senior year coming up. He's he's still growing. Right. As a young as a young man, a young football player, and boy, with what Coach Keon Hanley has done, not only with the defensive side of the ball, misleading with the record last year, and, and the Tigers with COVID-19 and and having to forfeit games, all the mess that that was, and it affected so many sports. It affected everyone, right? Not only here in the state of Alabama, athletically, but but all over the country and all over the globe, but. That defense last year holding four opponents to under seven points. And then you couple that with what you're building on the offensive side of the ball. That spells success. And that gets Fairfield back to championship levels that they enjoyed. They've enjoyed. Former coach Jim Vacakis, what he was able to do. Fake. That's Albert. And Albert, the punter. You got to keep your eye on him. It's an Amherst first down. Well, they tried the onside kick to begin the game. Right. It didn't work. But here, Gerhard, no fear. None, none. And you talked about the play calling early on in this game. I think they would have run this to begin with. And you get the penalty. It goes back five yards. Doesn't change the play call at all. And so Albert doesn't touch the ball on first, second, or third down. And now you get him to a fourth down situation. It's the best football player so far this game. Hey, you got him in a punting, punting situation. If they're back, you just trust your guy over their guy. And he has now made contributions in now offense with three touchdowns, defense with the interception, and on the special teams as a punter, picking up the first down. The only question you have now is can he play an instrument? <laughs> Another Amherst first down. Tumbling ahead. One of the running backs in the Tiger backfield in that rotation, Trevor Pearson, Jr., 5'9", 180 pounds, does a little bit of everything. And boy, the holes opened up by this offensive line all the way across the board. The big guys getting it done. Trevor Pearson taking advantage. And yeah, a big shout out to the offensive linemen. We've called out a few of them, especially on the tackles, but and the inside, they're doing it well there as well. A one-possession game here from Fairfield. We're back with the Game of the Week next. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Well, we're seeing a high level of football here tonight in our game of the week. WOTM, and that's what you can expect. Your exclusive TV home for AHSAA championship events throughout the calendar year. Super 7, of course, the finals, basketball, you know, the semifinals for high school basketball, the girls and the boys. You got bowling, softball, baseball. It's so outstanding to see 
what the AHSAA has done in continuing to grow high school athletics. And if WOTM is not a part of your provider's channel lineup, shame on then. You got to call and request that they add WOTM, your home, for AHSAA events. It all gets started here in the fall. Of course, football so early in the season. Thursday night lineup looks great. Of course, we have Friday night games. We got rebroadcasts on Saturdays. We, we've got a great roundup show that comes your way. We'll talk about that. But, of course, we got Center Point in Fairfield. You get Woodlawn in Mountain Brook. You saw some of the other games. So Amherst first down as the Tigers continuing to pound the rock. Hezekiah Hudson Davis has been their go-to. Opelika Carver Montgomery coming up on September 26th. That's followed by Oxford and Gadsden City. You're going to get Oak Mountain in Spain Park. Then through the early part of October, we'll have some great matchups in week seven, eight, and nine. And then Oxford and Central of Phoenix City. Don't be surprised to see any of those teams Start playing for championships there towards the end of the end of the season. Awesome. Great programs, great football programs. There should be some great games as well. Shelby Albert. The correction in the numerals. A little bit deceiving. That's Jabari Bennett. He can fly as well. Senior running back. Can hybrid as a wide receiver. Yeah, we get some positive that, yardage. Yeah, it's another guy that they use there in that backfield. They use they use Bennett, Hudson Davis, as well as Trevor Pearson. And we talked to Coach on the way out for halftime. He said we have multiple guys that can make plays for this football team, and you're seeing the evidence of that here in the second half. Here with the bunch set, we go back to Hudson Davis. Hezekiah Hudson Davis. Get out of bounds. A couple of late flags coming in. Could have a face mask against the center point Eagles. And if so, they'll tack it on. But the Amherst first downs for Fairfield so far, causing a lot of frustration. That man, Coach George Bates. Don't be a bit surprised if you see this play on a highlight reel as well, because way before that face mask, juke the guy, the defender right out of his shoes. There you see a clear call on the face mask there. And there you see the early part of the play here. Watch this. Hit the brakes. And he's off. And we've seen Hudson Davis run through guys in that time, finding the corner there. And just a very athletic individual play. As much love as Albert's gotten, and he's scored all three touchdowns so far. You got to give a whole lot of credit to Hezekiah Hudson Davis, who is the leading rusher for this, these Tigers. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun to watch if you're Hudson Davis. Meanwhile, if you're on the uh, receiving end of that and you're the defender, it's one that you'd like to forget. It's first down and goal. Picking it up, throwing it. Handley is able to connect. I'll give you one guess who. <laughs> it's Jacoby Albert, his fourth touchdown. Of the evening, just a, I mean, a, a crazy play here. Watch this, watch this route. It's a bunch route here. It's not an easy throw, but he gets it right on the corner, and that's precision. Like that, that is a college football throw. That's a college football catch, and there was the fourth touchdown of the day. You know, we talked about Iverson Hooks, who had five touchdowns, and he was the spotlight player last week. Don't be a bit surprised. The spotlight player this week is this man right here, Jacoby Albert. Game number one of his. Senior season, he is coming to play. The extra point is up. And it's good by DeAndre Poole. Well, Fairfield, Keon Hanley said finish. Looks like they took it to heart. 27-14 so we return here on WOTM. 
right now at Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor. The keyword is free. Buy any type of flooring at Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor and we'll install it absolutely free. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, laminate, or vinyl, get it professionally installed absolutely free. Why pay to have your new floor installed when you can have it installed absolutely free and get 0% financing for an entire year? That's right, free interest for an entire year and free installation. That's Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor's free installation sale going on right now. There's Keon Hanley, head coach of the Fairfield Tigers. They were able to go up 14-6. It was center point answering before halftime and tying it up. And then it's been a couple of touchdowns and added extra point, and that's where we stand, 354. Meanwhile, George Bates across the way from center point Eagles. Not exactly what he was looking for and his offense, they got to get on track and they'll have to get on track quickly. And this guy can do it. How about Troy Bruce Jr. falling down at the six yard line. Again, the turf monster here on this Clements Field surface, which shows you why he's all state. You said they needed a big play. They got one right here from Bruce. And just there right at the very end, trips up there. And I will, let's, let's see if Coach Bates lets him finish this thing off. He looks like he's holding his side there. So he, he caught a cramper or something that was able to slow down that momentum there towards the end. But Coach Bates has to love what he sees from the special teams there. Going down two scores. Now you need a big play here from your special teams and your offense. So far, special teams getting it done. Yeah, favoring the inner thigh, and it's an Amherst first down. First down and goal. And they'll mark him down at the seven. And the timeout is taken by George Bates and the Eagles. We'll take the timeout with them. Well, this one's far from over. We continue from Fairfield on WOTM. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amherst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use, and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank, or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Welcome back. 26-14, but center point threatening. And talk things over during the timeout. And we take a look at the extra point. After the last touchdown, thought he got it inside of the upright. But in fact, he didn't. Exactly, and that's another missed extra point there. So Fairfield giving center point a chance here. Center point with a great run here on special teams as they're able to cap this off with a touchdown. We'll see what it means for them. A little miscommunication. You hate to see that coming out of a timeout. Good play by the Fairfield defense capitalizing, but they call the timeout. They get Bruce back onto the field, and then they have a little bit of miscommunication there. And we'll see if they give them the football here. Early indications in the way that Fairfield is coming out of that pile. It looks like it will be their football. And what a turn of events. It looks like a clear touchdown for center point, only to turn this thing over. And that one just had no shot. And a clear fumble. Great work there by our crew. And a clear recovery by the Tigers and you talk about momentum swings wow. just like that you, you think you're back in it it's a it's a close football game you got your eyes in the end zone and you hand the football over back to a dangerous offense so Jabari Collier certainly would like to have that one back the junior quarterback got to protect the football the third turnover Tonight for the center point Eagles, and you're right, it could not have come at a worse time. Trying to answer, trying to get that momentum as Fairfield back on the offense, side of the ball. 
And a guy that he was trying to find who was open a couple of possessions ago. That's good for an am first first down, but another one of those weapons on the offensive side of the ball, Victor Gaines. He's able to turn it up, get positive yards, and take the Eagle defender with it. One thing that stuck with me with Coach Hanley at halftime, he said, we have other playmakers. And he's right. And you're seeing that here in the second half. Short game. Maybe a pickup of two on first down. We saw a lot up there in that first half. Demario Hicks, he's also been a part of the offense as well. Mainly as a blocker, but he also has a reception in this football game. We'll see if this Eagle defense can hold and get the football back. And you know, itching to get the ball back is Troy Bruce Jr. Had the end zone in his sights before falling. And it's a big series here for the Eagle defense. Well, the two touchdown lead, Keon Hanley. He just wants to see Amherst first downs, but he's going to get a big play here. Jabari Bennett. That might be a flag. Levi might have seen the laundry come out. Center point player grabbing Jabari Bennett as he was clearly out of bounds. And indeed, this might be 15 tacked on. But what these running backs have been able to do coming all the way back, cutting it back. You had the pursuit, the Eagle defense. You think you got him. And then the athleticism, the playmakers. Able to pick up another Amphers first down. They pick the flag up. So from midfield. Bennett, give it to the guy with a hot hand. Same result. Six, maybe seven yards there on the carries. The clock continues to move. With two minutes left here in this third corner. Gerhard, I've been impressed with Fairfield and, and the way that they've come out here in the second half. You know, you looked, and it, it's always not a true indicator, especially in the first game of the season, of what you're going to see. But it has been night and day since those first six, seven-plus minutes and what we've seen since then from Keon Hanley's club. Such domination by center point in the early stages of this one and give a whole lot of credit to Fairfield. I think it really started with the defense. I mean, you had the big play on special teams, but it started with the defense holding center point on the second drive and then it fed into the offense. The offense didn't score on that second drive, but they were able to get some momentum flowing and then they were able to get a touchdown. But then here, what I like seeing now is, hey, center point knows about Albert. They know about Hudson Davis. But now you're stringing in Bennett with it. You got Victor Gaines in the mix here for Fairfield. So you're seeing not only, hey, we can hit you with our stars, but we're hitting you with other players as well. And it's been a phenomenal effort so far. And, and it looks like here yeah. they, try to, they try to go with a little quick snap. The ball was dropped. They was trying the, the quarterback sneak. And, and couldn't tell the, the center quarterback exchange what happened there. Keon Handley, he wants to talk things over here on fourth and short. And that's what they'll do. And Fairfield, very fortunate to be able to fall on the football. Appreciate Amherst and their partnership here on our coverage of high school football on WOTM. Not a lot of Amherst first downs from this Fairfield team in this second half. Exactly. A lot of explosive plays, big plays. Get to those first downs, keep those chains moving, and obviously thank Amherst for their sponsorship. And this has been a good one between these two Birmingham City schools, and it, it's been it's been a great game. I think both teams have a lot that they would like to maybe have over again, some passes, some penalties. But all in all, we're still at a point where it's a it is a game where it is still in control by both teams. Even though center points down two touchdowns, we've seen their explosive ability. Can they get a stop here in fourth down? Get the football back and get rolling again. That's the question for Coach Bates' club. Meanwhile, can Fairfield maybe demoralize them a little bit 
by getting this first down and then maybe working the clock a little bit more because you have a guy like Hudson Davis, who's been so great out of the backfield, as well as Bennett and Victor Gaines here in the second half. Yeah, don't, don't be lulled to sleep or discouraged if you're a center point fan because you're a couple of Troy Bruce Jr. touches away. And as I say that, the ball fumbled. And Fairfield, well, they wanted that am first first down. But center point comes up with the football. And the Eagles not only getting the stop, keeping the deficit at 12, you get great field position here. Exactly. And I think this really does a lot more for the psyche of center point. Getting down as far as they got down there, down to the nine-yard line and fumbling the football, giving Fairfield the ball back. And now they have the football back, and now they can reset almost. You know, you had that long kickoff return. You don't get into the end zone, but the defense does its job. On fourth down, they get the football back. I think even if they didn't fumble, the defense is in position there to create the turnover on downs. Now can you keep the momentum going? Looks like big number seven, Trey Bruce Jr., back in the game for, for center point. So... They have all the weapons back. Can they capitalize on this? Collier rolling out, trying to find some help. Good coverage there at the secondary, and he's tossed out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Coming over to help. Got a couple of Fairfield Tiger defenders. Zamarian Tate was one of them. As you see there, grabbing a hold, but he got some help. Zamarian Tate, senior, great size for a linebacker. A lot of athleticism. The clock did not stop. So Collier finds his target around the 45-yard line and racing up to the 48. That's Malik Brown. We played 36 minutes. Thought maybe Fairfield was going to try to run away with this one here in this second half. But a fumble at midfield. Center point Eagles still in business. Stick around. It's Thursday Night Football, our game of the week here on WOTN. Now offering Tempur-Pedic's newest ProBreeze cooling mattress. Cooler when you lie down, cooler when you fall asleep, and cooler all night long. Wellness spaces are also available. Visit King's Mattress Gallery downtown Sylacauga today. Your local Sealy and Tempur-Pedic retailer. Every bank has their own app, but it's just that, theirs, not yours. At Amfirst, our app was made for you. So it's easy to pay bills, deposit checks, or transfer money to friends and family from anywhere. It's even customizable, which means you can personalize your dashboard, create usage alerts, and redeem points for rewards you'll love. And you can do it all on your own time. So what are you waiting for? Get the app made for you at Amfirst. Right now at Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor, the keyword is free. Buy any type of flooring at Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor and we'll install it absolutely free. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, laminate, or vinyl, get it professionally installed absolutely free. Why pay to have your new floor installed when you can have it installed absolutely free and get 0% financing for an entire year? That's right, free interest for an entire year and free installation. That's Ted's Abbey Carpet and Floor's free installation sale going on right now. Now offering Tempur-Pedic's newest ProBreeze cooling mattress. Cooler when you lie down, cooler when you fall asleep, and cooler all night long. Wellness spaces are also available. Visit King's Mattress Gallery downtown Sylacauga today. Your local Sealy and Tempur-Pedic retailer. Well, welcome back. We've been treated to a great Thursday night of high school football here on WOTM. Landry Roberts, Gerhard Mathangani. Not the only game going on tonight. You know, NFL preseason going on right now. Right. Colts, they were wondering Carson Wentz goes down with the injuries. It's going to be Jacob Eason, maybe somebody else, or maybe a, a quarterback that's in retirement. But uh, I don't know if he needs to change professions. Exactly. That's right. Phillip Rivers last year saying that he's hanging up to coach football and already picked up win number one today down in the Fairhope area. St. Michael Cardinals, they win 49 to nothing over McIntosh. So Phillip Rivers now 1-0 to start his career 
as a college football, a uh, high school football coach. Decided he wanted to go into high school football coaching because of his father. His father was obviously a, a head coach as well. His dad, Steve, and his brother, Steven, also there at the football game for him. So a nice shout out down to the Fairhope area as Philip Rivers gets win number one of his high school coaching career. Now, Jacoby Albert continuing to do a little bit and a lot of everything as he makes the tackle. And Troy Bruce Jr., who went out after falling down on the great-looking run that he had, the would-be touchdown, he was favoring the inner thigh when he came off. He has come back, but now going off again and walking very gingerly. And now the football being walked back right now by the officials. On that delay of game, so now we have a situation where it's fourth and long and whatever punt fake you might have had, that's out of the books. So you got to punt it back to Albert. Camarius Horn boots it away, and he's going to get a great center point eagle roll inside the 15. They'll mark it down officially at the 11. But swapping possessions, Fairfield unable to capitalize on fourth and short. Center point had a great opportunity to get some of that momentum back cut into this Tiger lead, unable to do so. And now if Keon Hanley can go back to the ground game, churn out some clock, which of those hand first first downs, that's got to be what the doctor ordered. Exactly, and they had the personnel to do it as well with Hudson Davis having a fantastic game so far. You saw in that third quarter a lot of Jabari Bennett as well wearing the number four for the Fairfield Tigers. Time is of the essence and opportunities are of the essence for center point. They've kind of blown two of them so far. Can the defense give them another one here? Still down two scores. Eric Hanley, sophomore quarterback, hands it off to Hezekiah Hudson Davis, able to keep his feet and slide his way for nine yards on first down. I think another key also for this Tiger offense will be to stay in bounds as much as possible, keep that clock rolling, as you mentioned. A bit ago, use up every bit of that shot clock. And have a good leader in order to do so. You have to trust your quarterback to drip it down to the under the five second mark. And that's exactly what they're doing here with just over 10 to play. Hanley almost a costly turnover as he drilled number two Camarius Horn right in the numbers and Horn unable to come up with it and that would have been six had he had it uh, there was nothing but green grass there and Horn knows that you see him looking up he understands the momentum of that and we talked about opportunities when opportunities present themselves center point needs to take advantage you think dad will rewind that one couple of times 100 percent he's working with son 100 percent injured player on the field we're back in a moment WOTM, your exclusive TV home for Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events. Great partnership, of course, the leadership changing hands there in Montgomery. Steve Savarese, outstanding career, what he was able to do in growing the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Gerhard, and you have a guy that's very familiar with what's going on and then taking it to the next level, right. that level, if you will, in Alvin Briggs. Exactly, and Alvin Briggs has kind of rode shotgun for the time that Mr. Savarese, Coach Savarese to some, was able to really kind of take this Alabama High School Athletic Association and make it one of the top ones in the country. We mentioned championship events, and it, Coach Savarese and championship events go hand in hand. He's been a large part of what makes those events so special, moving it from Legion Field over in Birmingham over to Tuscaloosa at Bryant Denny Stadium, also in Auburn. And then they also added in the new Progressive Stadium in Birmingham as a part of that rotation as well. So all of our high school youngsters 
playing at some of the premier venues in and around the state, not just in football, but across all sports. Football adding a third spot, and it's just such a benefit for these young student athletes to do the exact same thing. And, and we've seen this before a couple of times, and oh this, is, this is almost unfair at this point. A fourth and two, and you just give it to the best athlete on the field, and that's the second time in a row now he picks up a first down. Well, I can use several terms to describe Keon Hanley and his confidence <laughs> and his boldness with a fourth down and two and not putting the ball away. But I, I could also look at a guy like Jacoby Albert and go, you know what, I can't really blame you. Exactly. I mean, it, it, there's points of this part of the a football game where he almost feels like a creative player in a video game, where you just give him the ball at any point and he has such great instincts and he doesn't always have to burn you with speed. He can drop on a dime. He's got great vision. That time was able to pick up the first down there, essentially a slower developing play. Not much center point can do and the defense not only demoralizing for defense to have to be back out there, but then also you see the time running down as well, down two scores. Yeah, Jabari Bennett on the carry there. And you see a lot of hands on hips as we are just two minutes north of the halfway mark of this fourth quarter. Early in the season, a lot of humidity, a lot of heat, even when the sun goes down, as we know here in the deep south. And the body language is very, very telling right now for these center point players on the defensive side. They've had to be on the field for a very long time. And you take it back to how they played, especially in that first quarter. They played so well. And then once that running game for Fairfield found its stride, you see the wear and tear for this center point defense. And obviously, they haven't played poorly. It, all things considered. However, here in the late stages of the game, looks like they'll be giving up a lot of yards, mainly because the number 11's on the field, keeping those chains moving. Fairfield will be very deliberate here as the play clock at five now. Now they're going to have to hurry. They might have to burn a timeout as the play clock expires. No flag. And on third down, short of the first down marker. Once again, Jabari Bennett. It'll be fourth down and two. So another fourth and two. I, I don't even, I don't even, do you even line up? <laughs> do you even line up with a punt now? I, I don't think you do. <laughs> yeah, I think you just put, you put him in as quarterback. You put him in just to get the football. And it looks like they'll have Hanley back out there. But your, your last couple times on fourth down, you, you get in punt formation and you, you give it to Albert and let him work his magic. Looks like right now in the middle of the field, keep in mind what happened last time in the middle of the field, it was a fumble in center point football. And they're going to hand it off. And powering his way through the left side. Once again, Jabari Bennett, senior running back with another Amherst first down. So Keon Hanley, the gamble pays off on the fourth and two in the fake punt, the second we've seen. Second successful pink fake punt converted for the Tigers. And you look at the time, not much you can do. But right now, just you have to feel be frustrated if you're George Bates and that Eagle sideline. Exactly. I think the point now is, is try as best you can to get a turnover. Whether it's a strip, if they do put it in the air and close on the ball, try to get an interception. But as of right now, this Fairfield offense is clicking. The slant has been there. Victor Gaines. The receiving end of that one. We've seen some fine catches by Gaines, and it's good for another Amherst first down. Try to get Gaines involved in the latter stages of the first half, and he has been a big player here in the second half. Now, multiple receptions, that time for a first down, an all-important first down that will keep this thing going. And so we'll see how it all winds up. Six minutes to go in our WOTM game of the week. Since 1848, First Bank of Alabama has been dedicated to our customers and excellence in all areas. With constant improvements to our facilities, to adding new products and services to better serve you, our team is fully engaged in all the communities we serve. First Bank of Alabama knows that time is money, so we offer hometown services with advanced technology that allows you to bank on your own schedule. We want to be your community bank. 
So stop by. Come see us at First Bank of Alabama, where you're always first. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Well, we're just getting things started here on a Thursday night. Coming up tomorrow night, our Friday night Rivals game. My 68 WABM. Vestavia trying to bounce back after the week one loss to Mountain Brook. Falling 33-3. Take it on Homewood. Winning in dramatic fashion on the road against Hillcrest and the re-air right here on WOTM. Coming up on Saturday at 9 a.m. That's the way to get started. We got our first week zero college football games. Right. Starting around noon. Mm -hmm. So you can watch some great prep action as we get ready to get rolling and continue rolling with the high school football season and also the college and later on the NFL. Love football. No better way to set the table than the Rebels and the Patriots, so watch that live as well as on the rear. Jabari Bennett. Finally knocked out of bounds, an Amherst first down. He ate up several Amherst first downs with that run as he's knocked out of bounds inside the five. You see a lot of standing up on the defensive line. Not a whole lot of push being given. These guys have played a lot of minutes, been on the field for a long time for the center point. Eagle defense and the talent doesn't stop. The rotation doesn't stop. Fairfield not missing a beat. Whoever comes into the ball game and the credit really needs to start with that big offensive line. They, they're athletic. They're not just big and they've done no much work. 100 percent. And it's a, it's a line, as you said, that they're not just big, but they're also very, very athletic, talented. Saw Chris Devons earlier make a big impact defensively. Meanwhile, also Adrian Griffin, who we spotlighted earlier in the game. Ahmad King, big number 60. Also big number 74, Janoris Poole Jr. And 77, Jaquan McElroy or McElroy. And we have, looks like a, an eagle down there. And 77, Jaquan McElroy. 6'9", 315 pounds. Hard to miss. <laughs> oh, yeah. And six foot nine, 315 pounds. And you see, and not all 315 is, is you know, no. built the same. And he's he's a very lean guy and obviously really good with his feet. He's done a great job in both pass protection and his run blocking. And what a treat for Coach Hanley as well as Eric Hanley, Albert Bennett, and everybody else who's touched the football for these Tigers. Three backs in the backfield. And it's going to be Bennett again, and Bennett waltzes into the end zone as Fairfield adds to their lead with 4.37 left in this one. Eighteen point lead. It's coming up. The center field, or center point defender, excuse me, able to get one hand on Bennett, but for 142 pounds, he plays a lot bigger than the weight would indicate. He runs very hard, and that's what you've seen no matter who's in. If it's Bennett, if it's Hezekiah Hudson Davis that's running the football at times, we've seen others that have rotated in the game uh, for Keon Hanley and this offense, and that's frustrating. Trevor Pearson who's been able to come in and spell, and of course we talked about Jacoby Albert with the four touchdowns and one interception, a couple of fake punts converted for the Amherst first down. The only question about Albert now, does he play an instrument? <laughs> can he sell a cheeseburger? I mean, can, I mean, there, there's not much he can do in this game, but then I, I think it, it really has come to fruition what Coach Hanley said going into halftime, that they had multiple playmakers and they were able to show it and showcase it on the last two drives. And what I really liked was there at the very end after Bennett got into the end zone. You saw Hudson Davis give a well-deserved high five 
to his teammate that got into the end zone. Hudson Davis will end the game with the, the most yards, and obviously he wants to score, but he is so, so happy to see his teammate get into the end zone. Speaking of joy, you see it right here, and you see the you see the fun that they described? Well, well, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it fun? It, After the failed two-point conversion, though, your, your team's up 18 with right. four and a half, north of four and a half to play. And why not? You didn't play last week. You take it on a, a center point team that's bringing back a lot of talent, a playoff team from last year. Mm -hmm. George Bates, so many playmakers. But Keon Handley, and you, you start. I'm not going to say looking ahead now, but – you know the quality opponent that you're opening up with and this kind of performance. This is a Fairfield team that we'll certainly be watching and keeping an eye on as the 2021 season unfolds. But there's first indicate not not to rush to judgment. Right. But first impression, this looks like a playoff team. 100 percent. You mentioned last year they got into the they got into the dance. They lost in the first round. They do play in a tough region. Both these teams do. Fairfield plays in that. Five, class 5A, Region 5 is also Parker's in there with Carver, Birmingham, John Carroll, Pleasant Grove, who's one of the top three teams in the state. Ramsey, who's won a state championship not that long ago, and Cordova. So they'll be tested, but they were tested tonight. Looks like they'll get the job done, barring a miracle in the last four and a half. Well, we'll have a re-kick here. And back to receive is Troy Bruce Jr. The last time he got a kickoff return, Fell just short of the end zone. We'll see how it, it transpires this time around. You get a running start here from the 22. And he slips down before he can really get going. Able to get eight yards before falling down at the 30. Barry Collier and the center point offense. 428 to work. And a lot left to do. Mentioned the region that Fairfield is in. The Center Point Eagles also in a very tough region, Region 6. Won by Alexandria last year, and that's who they will play next. Lincoln is also in that region, as well as Moody, Leeds, who's a top 10 team in the state, Hayden, St. Clair County, and Corner. So not an easy run to the playoffs for either of these teams. You figure both teams will be back in the top four, vying for a playoff spot, vying for a region championship. They both will be in the mix, but the bragging rights down in the Birmingham area, looks like it'll be with Fairfield for the next year. Somehow Troy Bruce able to secure the football on the screen before it hit the turf. The bad news is it gave the Fairfield Tiger defenders a chance to close in on the talented center point running back. Brought him down right there at the line of scrimmage. So second down and 10 coming up. Under four minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. One of the things that it, we, it, this always gets done in college football, a lot in the NFL. It's, hey, did this team win the game or did this team lose the game? Now, I think if you're looking glass half full for center point, I think center point can look themselves in the mirror and say, hey, guys, we let this one slip away. I think Fairfield can look at themselves in the mirror and say, hey, guys, we took advantage of the situations that we were given, the opportunities that were given via the fumble, via the interception. We took advantage of those situations, and then we put our foot there on their throat at the very end and scored that last touchdown. But if we want, if, if you want to do the game of semantics and the word play, center point can look themselves in the mirror and say, hey, guys, we, we had position. We had a chance to win this football game. Obviously didn't end up getting it done. Obviously do not want to. Close the door on this one before it's completely over with. Still have three minutes, 36 seconds to play with a quick strike offense. But Coach George Bates will be able to glean both a positive message from this game and also a chance to get his troops in order for their next game against a very, very good opponent in the Alexandria Valley Cubs. And Alexandria plays a great non-region game coming up tomorrow as well in the Cowan County area against Jacksonville. A delay called. Against center point, that expression says it all. It was a year ago we saw a great battle between these two teams to open up this season. And Fairfield winning by one. Centerfield, center point, I'm feeling very good about the team that they had coming back. As Jabari Collier able to find some room, still on his feet. 
wrestle down at the 45. Another and first, first down, 323 left. And move the chains. Watch this Fairfield team tonight. We're going to talk about getting hit in the mouth and waking up. That's exactly what happened after that first offensive possession by the Eagles. Exactly. And you love a team to respond the way that they did. And if you're Coach Bates, he wants his team to be able to counter once a team responds the way Fairfield did early. You saw that time the yards after the contact took a big blow there, Dick Collier, but he was able to pick up a few more yards. Pass deflected as Collier was looking for his intended receiver. Out in the flats. And a fine defensive play. By number 32 for the Fairfield Tigers. Javian Rudolph, junior outside linebacker. Still playing hard are, the, are these Tigers on defense. And after that second touchdown late in the first stages of the of the late stages of the first half, you I thought that, hey, center, I'd be surprised if center point landed on 14. They started the first half strong, ended the first half strong, but here they are looking to get on the board one more time. And throwing it up. And maybe a miscommunication there on the outside is Troy Bruce Jr. was lined up along with Thurman Moore. Moore asking what happened. Is he stopped on the route? And Collier's throw, luckily, out of the outstretched hands as one of the deep backs and defensive backs for Fairfield is the closest player to it. Second out and 10. On from my Correction. On the, on the That'll be good for a am first first down unsportsmanlike penalty. And, it's a first down. and for all the the smiling and the happiness the and the joy. Then it quickly Tigers. turns to that. Keon Hanley not happy. He can't be happy. And there's there's a fine line between being excited about what you've done and being excited about being able to make some plays and then going right over that line and getting one of those calls. I didn't see any hits down there on the field. So I think it was a situation where he's running his mouth a little bit too much. And Coach Hanley saying, hey, it looks like we have this game in the bag, but there's going to be a time in this, in this season where those 15 yards will kill us. And it looked like in the middle of this game, it will be a situation like that. They gave up two first downs on big time penalties that led to that second touchdown. And obviously sitting on a nice, comfortable, more comfortable lead here, you still want to have your players focused and determined. These are, these are teaching moments right now, being able to toe that line. We've heard from the, the, the college ranks that they will crack down on taunting. Both college and the NFL will do that. And I'm sure the same message will be said in high school officiating as well. So I have to continue to manage around that. Troy Bruce Jr. With a carry up. And for his first down, the footing has been a problem. Yes. For Bruce on some of those runs that maybe could have gone for bigger plays. We know one, in fact, could have. But he's not able to keep his feet on the return. Would be touchdown and ending up at the five yard line. Collier, and he's going to be dropped. Big 51, hard to miss him. Elijah Tribble. Six foot, 318 pounder. We talked about the senior, veteran, experienced team that Fairfield brings back this season. A lot of these seniors are really making their presence felt today. We've seen it from Jabari Bennett. We've also seen it from, of course, Albert. That time, Tribble getting into the mix. Also seeing it from that big offensive line. Lots of players, including Ahmad King, seniors on that offensive line. The experience has really shown up here, especially in the second half. Collier loads up, looking for the big play. Once again, Harold Holloman, the intended receiver. And it falls to the surface. It's a third down, a minute 32 left. 
And if there's anything, and you, you certainly never, and we saw it in the state championship game last year. Right. You never concede, right? Right. There's always a chance. Mm -hmm. Crazy things happen. But if you're George Bates right now, in this one with some, some positive momentum right. to carry into next week as you take on, as you mentioned, an Alexandria team. A team that won the region championship last year in a very competitive Class 5A Region 6. You would love to see here if you're center point. You know, obviously, the game might be out of hand. But your shot at being competitive and closing this thing out strong is something that's in your hands. They've put themselves way behind the eight ball now on third and very long. We'll see what they can get here as far as yardage goes. But I think ending this one on a strong note is a is kind of a must for this Eagle football team. Nobody home. Troy Bruce Jr., the closest guy to it. Collier can't find him. And Collier obviously frustrated. Not only the score, but maybe the inconsistency we've seen through the passing game tonight. But a young man that can go back, he can certainly look at the film, use this as a motivator, because you've got a lot of games left, a lot of region games left. And games one through two. Right. Biggest and, improvement. Yep. And every coach says that. Most players feel that. When you become a veteran, you, you kind of sense that. And when you're a quarterback, you can kind of sense that within a team. Fourth and 21. That pass goes nowhere. Good play on the ball by Victor Gaines. And it looks like Fairfield's just a couple of knees, a couple of runs away from closing this thing out. A lot of credit to that Fairfield defense. I think they really came to step up there in the late part of that first quarter, used the defense to get the offense rolling, and they closed out with a nice play there by Gaines. And it holds true, getting better between games one and two. It's bad news if you're an opponent <laughs> lying ahead for this Fairfield Tiger team. As we see Victor Gaines after the pass breakup, hopefully just a cramp. Coming up next Thursday here, on our high school game of the week, we get Woodlawn and Mountain Brook. It all begins here at 7 o'clock. Got to join us. Great slate of high school football. And all the events here on WOTM. I'm glad you made us a part of your Thursday night. Minute 23 left. Fairfield. Taking over on downs. Jamaria Hamilton checking in the freshman at quarterback. Coach Keon Hanley has seen enough from his starting unit, at least a starting quarterback, and will probably give a Easy running assignment here to his freshman quarterback if they can get the play call off. That's now two times where we have a flag before the play starts and they start way behind the eight ball once again. And Hanley trying to just run this clock out. A couple of penalties here to start it out. Good look at Jamaria Hamilton. So the night is over for Eric Hanley, sophomore quarterback for Fairfield, had a fine game in running the offense. Hamilton with a player latching onto his jersey. Javon Jones. And the Tigers will let the clock roll under one minute. Season of 2021, much different than what we saw a year ago, but what a great opener for this Fairfield Tiger team. Impressive performance all the way around, and a team that's going to have to be reckoned with. I think that's an understatement from what we've seen and just all the skill you have all over the field, both sides of the ball. 
and a lot of those players do go both ways. Of course, number one player being our our game of the, the player of the game for this one in Albert, who had such a phenomenal game. But you're right, this is a, a Fairfield team that went five and six last year. Had a first lost the first round of the playoffs to Russellville and had to forfeit two games because of coronavirus. So a very happy Fairfield football team getting win number one of the season. Well, it's Fairfield, a 32-14 winner in the opener of the 2021 season. We're back to wrap it up after this. The perfect checking account doesn't exist. Not at a bank, that is. So why do you keep looking there? At Amfirst, you can get no minimum balance or monthly fees, an instant issue debit card, and free checks with unlimited check writing. But who doesn't want more? Like a rewards program you'll actually use and convenient digital tools that make it easy to manage your account from anywhere. Now you could try and find that at a bank or you could save yourself the trouble by checking with us. Welcome to the award-winning Chakalaka Park in Oxford, Alabama. We believe Chakalaka Park is the place to be and our fans agree. Describing the park as breathtaking, professional, and fun for all. With plenty of parking, restrooms, concessions, and a top-notch staff, we are confident your experience will be second to none. Join us today at Chakalaka Park. It's back to school time, and Sarah is paying your sales tax on new and pre-owned vehicles. Upgrade to a nicer, newer Ford, Honda, or Nissan, and the Sarah dealerships of Silicaga will pay your sales tax. That is a huge savings. We're paying your sales tax on new or select pre-owned vehicles on our lot. You heard right. We pay your sales tax. Interest rates are at historic lows. There's never been a better time to get more for your money. Plus, we've never paid more for your trade-in. Get a cash offer, even if you don't buy from us. We'll pay you 1000 more than any other written offer. Other dealers may be low on inventory, but at Sarah Dealership, we're stepping on the gas and loading up our lot. Come in today and get more Ford, Honda, and Nissan for your money at the Sarah Dealership of Silicago on Highway 280, and we'll pay your sales tax. Must finance at least 75% of purchase price with dealer preferred lender at dealer asking price. Not available in all pre-owned vehicles. See dealer for details. Drive it, love it. Well, the Fairfield Tigers winning and winning in convincing fashion. 32 14 over center point, now turning to the home crowd. The Fairfield Tiger fans, a lot to be happy about. Keon Hanley and the Tigers 1 0 this season, making it two a row over center point. Impressive. And it's just getting started. We're still very, very early. The infancy of the high school football season, Gerhard. Four quarters down, one weekend for the Fairfield Tigers. A huge congratulations to Coach Hanley and his bunch for picking up the win. A nice effort there by Coach Bates and the Eagles, but it is 1-0 to that guy, Jacoby Albert, and the Fairfield Tigers picking up the big win today. From all of us to all of you, thanks for making us a part of your Thursday night. It continues all season long here on WOTM.